Hey guys, welcome to the complete SketchUp for Web course, which is a three and a half hour course to take you step by step in learning SketchUp with the free SketchUp for Web version. Now within the course, I'll show you step by step on how to use every single tool that SketchUp for Web has to offer. And by the end of the course, you'll learn how to create projects just like these right from scratch. Also, the techniques taught in this course will help you create other kinds of projects like furniture models, interior spaces and architectural models. Now, before you start with the course, I have some call to actions for you guys just to help this channel grow. Please do subscribe for more such videos. We also have various courses on our website sketchupguru.com which you can check out for advanced methods in SketchUp and also renderings with video for SketchUp. And I would also like to give a big shout out to the SketchUp Sages on the SketchUp Forum website on sharing some of the nitty gritties of using SketchUp. SketchUp is a great software and is also one of the most widely used 3D softwares in the world. And if you learn how to use SketchUp, you can create whatever you like under the sun. It's a very simple UI and I'm sure you're gonna love the software by the end of this course. Now, I'm excited to get started with the course. I hope you are too. I'll see you guys in the course inside. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome to the course. So in this course, we learn how to use SketchUp and we'll be using the free version of SketchUp called SketchUp for Web. So to access SketchUp for Web, you can go to Google and search for SketchUp Web English and click on the first link that shows up on Google. All right, so you entered the SketchUp for Web website and to start using SketchUp, you can click on the start modeling icon here and you will need to sign in with your Google account or any other account. And if this is your first time using SketchUp, you can click on create a triple ID and then you can select your region. I'm going to go ahead with European Union and click on next. Then you need to give in your details, click on next. Add in the verification code that you will receive by email. Submit. Add a password as well. And click on submit. You can check these details if it's as per your country or region. And then click on next. Now, if you'd like added extra layer of security, you can click on count me in. In my case, I do not require that. So, I'll enable MFA later. So, if this is the first time I'm going to be opening SketchUp. Make sure to accept that terms. You can go through that terms as well. Click on OK. All right, so welcome to SketchUp. And we're going to start using this amazing software to create 3D models, interior spaces, architectural buildings, furniture models, and a whole lot more. Now, if you're going to be following along in this course, it's a good idea to bookmark this website. So you can either bookmark using the star button here. Or my preferred way to access SketchUp for web is by using this home button here. So let's copy app.sketchup.com. So you can select all of that, copy it. And then if you're using any browser, just go to its settings here and then search for home. So you can see we have the show home button. You can switch this on to show the home button. And then you'll need to simply paste in your link here and tap enter. So if you open a new tab and click on the home button here, it will open up SketchUp. And to access SketchUp, you need, of course, click on Start Modeling. Now, if you want to go back to the home page, do not click the Backspace button because that would just redirect you to another website. So if you want to go back to the main home page or your dashboard, so let me show that to you again. Let's click on Start Modeling. Just go to your top left here and then click on Home. Now, before we proceed further, I would highly recommend that you watch this course at 1.5x speed to grasp the concepts faster and learn faster as well. And to import our exercise files, what you can do is, for example, if I start modeling here, or create a new file. To import a file, simply go to your menu option here, click on import, and click on my device. Now you can click on this icon here. Select the exercise files, which you will find in the link in the description for each lesson. Some lessons do not require exercise files. Some lessons can be followed with exercise files. So you can select this, click on open and click on import as component. So this will bring in your model. You need to click and release on your mouse to place your model in the scene. And to use this, what you have to do now is simply right click on this model and click on explode. So that's all you have to do for now to use the exercise files. 
You can follow along with exercise files or you can sit back, relax and watch the video and learn with your own files as well. So in the coming few videos, we'll run through each and every single tool in SketchUp, the UI in SketchUp for web and a whole lot more. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Now you can follow this course along with the free version of SketchUp as I explain all the basic tools that you can use for free. But there would be some instances where I explain additional tools, for example, the solid tools. So if you click on the bottom left of these main tools and then click on any of the solid tools here, for example, intersect, you'll notice that you will need to upgrade your SketchUp license in order to use this feature. Let me show you the various subscriptions that SketchUp has to offer. So let's click on upgrade here. So for commercial use, we have SketchUp Go, SketchUp Pro and SketchUp Studio. SketchUp Pro is the most popular software that most professionals use and it will be a standalone application that you can install into your system, be it Windows or Mac. Now the difference between SketchUp Pro and SketchUp Studio is that SketchUp Pro doesn't support importing of Revit files and also doesn't support Trimble Scan Essentials, which is basically to model point clouds in SketchUp. Now the major difference between SketchUp Studio and SketchUp Pro is that SketchUp Studio ships with V-Ray for SketchUp. So if you buy this version of SketchUp, it comes with V-Ray as well. And you can create high quality photorealistic renders with SketchUp and V-Ray for SketchUp. So you can see there's a drastic difference between these two versions as well, but you can get most of the work done with a SketchUp Pro license. Now for this course, in case you want to use the additional features that SketchUp for web has to offer, for example, the solid tools and few more, then you can sign up for the SketchUp Go subscription, which is about 115 euros in Europe. It'll of course vary depending on where you are from. Now, if you are a student, you can click on higher education and you have different subscriptions for students as well. You will need to, of course, show up proof that you are a student and you can find a reseller and get the student version from wherever you are from. Finally, we have SketchUp for schools. Now, SketchUp for schools is basically for secondary and primary schools. And it is, again, a browser based version of SketchUp. So if you are an admin for your school, you can sign up for this version of SketchUp as well. In our case, for this course, you can follow along with the free version of SketchUp. And as you progress and improve your skills, I would highly recommend that you slowly start upgrading your license as well. Now, in the forthcoming videos, we'll explore each and every tool in SketchUp for web. And we'll also build some really cool projects along the way as well. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. In this video, I'm going to introduce the SketchUp for web UI and all the various features that it has to offer. All right, so the first step is to select the right template. So right now you can see we can create a new file or right next to it, we have this drop down button. So if you select that, you can select any of the templates here. In this case, we're going to go with architectural V10 inches. But I will also mention the metric system every now and then in case you are more familiar with the metric system. So go ahead and select the one which works best for you. So I'm going to select architectural feet and inches and boom, we are now in SketchUp, a very simple software to use to create models quick, fast and iterate multiple options for whatever design project you're doing. All right. So now you can see we have the main viewport right in the center here with our figure. Now SketchUp always ships with a 2D figure, which helps us understand the scale of our 3D model as well. In this case, this is Tai. Now on the top left, we have the menu. So you can see we have a very basic menu. We have the name of the file. Let's go ahead and change the name. So click on Untitled here. Now to save the project, you need to select Projects. And then you can go ahead and give a name for the project. So in this case, we're going to be creating a Tetris model for this project. So let's name it as such with the date and the name. It always helps adding the date to all your files so that you know when you created this file. So click on save and you're done. Now, when you click on the top left, it will drop down with various menu options. This is the basic file menu option. So if you want to go back to your home dashboard, you can click on home here. And now you can see the various files in your server. So let's open our model back again. 
Now let's open the file menu again and, and you have the basic options like new, open, save as. You can also share this model as a link to your friends or to, of course, your clients and colleagues and they can view the model as well. And you can also import from your own computer. If you have certain models that you would like to import, you can import a SketchUp file, a PNG or a JPG. In case you would like to export, you could export as well. We have 3DS, Collada, DWG. And if you're not using the pro version of SketchUp, some of these options may be grayed out. For example, DWG. So if you have the licensed version of SketchUp, all of these options should work in SketchUp for web as well. Then you also have download where you can download a SketchUp model. You can export a PNG or you can also download an STL file for 3D laser printing. Then we have app settings. Now you can change certain settings here. Let me make myself smaller so that you guys can see the screen better. So we have general accessibility and navigation. Under general, we have the auto save. So it saves your file every five minutes. Then we have the move tool where it shows the rotation grips. We'll come back to this later. And most importantly, we have the language and the default template, which we are using for this model. Now SketchUp is a very versatile software, so you can also change the units later, but I would highly recommend that you stick with the units throughout the project. And we'll be using English for the rest of the course. Accessibility is the axis lines here. So you can see the red axis, the green axis, the blue axis. And we also have some additional tangent and perpendicular lines. That is when we are drawing with the line tool, which I'll talk about later as well. Navigation is you can either navigate with your mouse. Now, I would highly recommend that you use a 3D mouse. I have a very small, simple mouse that I use. And this is great for 3D modeling because it gets the work done. You can also use the trackpad. I will create a separate video, maybe for those who do not have a mouse. And especially for Mac users, it's pretty much the same UI if you're using SketchUp for web, both on the Mac and on the PC. Just the shortcuts are a bit different. And I will talk about the shortcuts in the Mac video. Then we have the zoom. So of course you can also change it, but I will highly recommend that you stick with mouse. All right. And these settings can be left as default. Now, if you're not used to zooming in inversely, you can switch this off as well. All right, let's close this. And now let's jump back to the main UI. So like I mentioned in the start, this is the main viewport where the magic happens. On the left is the main tools, which we'll talk about in detail for every single tool and how you can use these tools. So you yeah, have the pencil tool, the move tool, rotate tool and more. And at the bottom, we have these three buttons, which also shows additional tools that you can use in SketchUp. Now, some of this again will be grayed out depending on your version of SketchUp. Now, on the right, we have the default ray, which you generally find on SketchUp Pro as well. So if you click on these icons here, it opens up the default tray. You can also close it in case you do not want specific ones to show up. And on the top right, if you click on that, it will hide the entire default tray as well. So we'll talk about each of these, for example, the 3D warehouse, entity info, scenes, styles, and more in the future videos. Finally, on the bottom left, we have the help option. In case you need additional help from the forums or from their help center. Also, we have the language. We can change the language here as well. You will need to reload in case you change the language. And you can also change the mouse setting here as well in case you're using a trackpad. And on the bottom right, we have the measurement box. Now, the best part about SketchUp is you can input both in metric and inches as well. So you can see right now the dimensions are in inches. But for example, if I draw a line, I can also type in meters. So I'll type 1 M and tap enter. And you can notice that I've created the line at 1 meter. So if I measure this, it would be about 3 feet 3 inches, which is exactly 1 meter. Also, please note that when you type in measurements in SketchUp, it is not required for you to click on the measurement box here in the bottom right. So for example, if I create a rectangle here, I want to give a dimension, I will simply type in the value directly on my keyboard and tap enter. You do not need to click here. As you can see, I simply typed in the value on my keyboard and 
tap enter now i'll of course show you how to use all these tools in detail in the coming few videos this is just to give you a heads up in case you start clicking around on the box all right so that was a very brief introduction into sketchup for web and now we'll jump into the various tools so i'll see you guys in the next video cheers hey guys welcome back so in this video i'll show you how to navigate in sketchup which is the essential foundation that you need to work with sketchup so you need a mouse for starters and i'll show you how to first select stuff click and also zoom and all of it in sketchup so basic navigation features now by default the select tool would be active if you open sketchup for the first time you can notice the select tool here as well which indicates that it is active or you can also tap the space bar on your keyboard to make sure that you are on the select tool so to select you need to of course left click so if i left click you can see that i have selected tie and if you want to deselect you can click outside the object that we've just selected so if i click outside you can set, see that i've deselected now if you right click on this object it will show various options so you can see you can erase it hide lock edit component explode select all with same tag all instances change axis intersect faces soft and smooth edges and zoom selection zoom selection is very useful so if you click on this it will zoom right into the object we'll talk about the other ones later but since this is a video on navigation let's keep it basic now next is your orbiting so we spoke about left click which is to select right click which is to select the object and see the other options where you can copy paste and more and if you click on the middle mouse button nothing happens unless you click and hold so if you click and hold you can orbit so make sure you click and hold on the middle mouse button and then you can orbit stuff in sketchup now with the middle mouse button you need to always click and hold right and if you hold down the shift key on your keyboard with the middle mouse button held down as well you can pan as well so this is the essential foundation where you orbit and you hold down shift and then you can pan in sketchup as well you can also navigate in sketchup using shortcuts or by clicking on the navigation icons on the left so if you notice we have the orbit icon here and we also have pan so you can click on orbit to activate it or you can tap o on your keyboard to activate it as well and then you need to left click on your mouse and you can orbit around using the orbit tool as well and if you switch to the pan tool so tap h on your keyboard and then you can left click and drag so you can see i'm holding down the left click mouse and i'm dragging to pan in sketchup now you can also shift to the pan tool by using the orbit tool so if you activate the orbit tool by tapping o on your keyboard and hold down the shift key on your keyboard then it switches to the pan tool so if you left click on the viewport you can notice that i'm panning in sketchup you need to left click and hold down to the mouse button to pan or to orbit now there's also the zoom tool so let me go back to my select tool by tapping the space bar and you can zoom in by using the scroll on your mouse so if you scroll in you can see you can scroll into any area where the mouse is pointed in sketchup you can also use the shortcut for the zoom which is z on your keyboard so if you tap z it switches to a magnifying glass and in this case you need to left click and hold down on the mouse and drag to drag in or drag out or zoom in or zoom out that is now another nifty shortcut that i would i would highly recommend that you start using from the start is shift plus z so for example if i sort of zoom out you can see we have some additional faces here so if i tap shift hold down shift on my keyboard and then tap z it will zoom out which is called zoom extends and see we can see the entire model now those are two useful shortcuts that you need to keep in mind there's a lot more our zoom features in sketchup and i'll create a specific video for the zoom tool all right so to recap if you left click on an object it will select the object if you click outside it will deselect you will also be using the escape key on your keyboard quite a lot especially in groups we'll talk about that later and then of course we have the orbit which is to 
hold down to the middle mouse button and while holding down the middle mouse button and if you hold down shift it switches to pan and finally if you use the scroll wheel on your mouse you can zoom in or zoom out into SketchUp and right click for more options for your object that you would like to explore. Now in the next video we will learn how to use more select tool features. By the way if your command is something else you can tap the space bar and that's that goes back to the select tool. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys welcome back. So in this video I'll show you how to use the select tool in SketchUp. So the select tool can be accessed from your main toolbar here on the left. So you can click on that and you can access the main the select tool or my preference is by using the shortcut space bar. So this is your first shortcut that you would need to learn in SketchUp and you will be using quite a lot. So get in the habit of just tapping on space bar. You don't need to tap and hold. That's wrong. Just tap once and you'll be good to go. So that's the shortcut for select tool. So with the select tool activated, you can now left click and select any of these objects. You can also select faces and edges. By the way, this file will be available for you guys to use in the exercise files for this course. And I'll plug all, all of that in as well. All right. So you can select any of these objects by left clicking. And if you click outside, it will deselect. Now, if you like to select multiple objects, you can select one object and hold down the control key on your keyboard for Windows users or option key for Mac users and then go ahead and select these objects this way as well. Now, once you selected some objects, you'd like to deselect certain objects, you can do so as well. Just hold down control and hold down shift. You need to make sure you hold press down on the keyboard. So then it will change the icon to minus and now you can deselect stuff as well. So select is holding down control and deselect is control shift for Mac users option shift. Now here's another useful selection that you would need to know while using SketchUp, which is to click and drag. So if you left click, hold down the mouse button and drag from top left to bottom right. You can see I've created a window selection. So you need to hold down, make sure to click and hold down to that left mouse button. So this way I can create a window selection, which means that whatever comes within this box only will get selected. Now there's two ways to select. So from the top left to the bottom right. So this is a window selection. You can also create a window selection from the bottom right to the top left and notice that the line changes to a dashed line. Now what this means is that even if selection is the foot of tie, the entire object gets selected. Now notice if I make a selection from top left to bottom right and I do not envelope entire objects, it doesn't get selected. So if I just maybe leave the selection here, click drag and leave the selection here can see that doesn't get selected. So top left to bottom right is works only if the object is within the entire box and bottom right to top left is when you want any object which comes in the path of this line to get selected. I hope that made sense. Let's use the same concept here as well for this box. So if I make a drag selection from the top left to the bottom right, only this line of this object will get selected. Now in 3D modeling, we have the lines, which is also the edges. Then we have the vertices, which is which are these corners here. You can't really select them in SketchUp, but you can in Blender and more. Actually, you can in SketchUp, but I will show it to you later. And finally, we have the face. So these three entities are the important foundations of your 3D model in SketchUp. So the face, the edge, and the vertex here. All right, so let's go back to the topic of this video, which is the select tool. So if I make a drag selection from top left to bottom right, you can see only the line selects. But if I want this face to be selected, I can also either select by just clicking on any of the faces here or make a drag selection this way. So you can see only the front face of this object gets selected. Now, if you make a drag selection from the bottom right to top left, 
you can see all those faces and edges get selected as well. So I hope the select tool concept is grounded in properly. And one last thing which I would like to show you is why you will be using the select tool a lot. Now, if for example, I'm using the line tool here and I want to go back to the select tool and select stuff, I can tap escape, which gets out of the command, but it doesn't switch to the select tool. So when you're in another tool and if you want to select stuff, you can't. So you'll always need to switch by tapping the shortcut spacebar. So once you tap spacebar, it will switch between tools. So always get in the habit of using the spacebar in SketchUp. And last but not least is the double selections and the triple selections in SketchUp. So now, for example, if you select or if you click once on this face, it only selects the face. But what if I want to select the face and also these four edges here? Then you can double click on the face. So if you double click quickly, it will left click that is quickly on the face, it will select that face. And what if you want to select the entire object which is connected to this face? So if you triple click quickly, you can see that the entire object gets selected. So again, click once for just the face, double click for the faces and the edges and triple click on the object to select all the faces and edges connected to that object. That's another important concept that you need to know while using the select tool. In the next video, I'll show you how to use the line tool and also talk a brief about the axis lines in SketchUp. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. In this video, I'll show you how to use the line tool in SketchUp and also a brief on the axis lines. All right, so to activate the line tool, you can click on the pencil icon here. So that will activate the line tool. Or you can also tap L on your keyboard, which is the shortcut for your line tool. So that's the second shortcut that you would need to learn in SketchUp. I would highly recommend that you write down these shortcuts. It's a way of learning for you as well. And of course, when you want to switch back to the select tool, how do you do that? You tap the space bar. So that's how simple it is to switch between tools and very important in the modeling process in SketchUp. So when you activate the line tool, so let's activate the line tool again, you can create different lines in SketchUp on various axes. So you can see we have three different axes here. We have the red axis, the green axis, and the blue axis. Now, when you want to create a line on the red axis, you simply need to click once, and then you need to release the finger from the mouse button. So click and release. So that's the first click that you need to do. And now when I move my mouse around, you can snap it to these different axis lines. You can also snap it to the blue axis. So I'm going to sort of hover over the red axis, and then click the second time to create my line. Now, this is where the orbit and pan tool comes in handy. So with the line tools or this line command activated, I'm going to orbit to the other side. So I'm going to click down, hold down the middle mouse button and I'm going to orbit to the other side. Now I can see my green axis better. So now I will hover to the green axis. So these are basically the XYZ coordinates in your 3D modeling space. So I'm going to orbit over the green axis and I'm then I'm going to click again. Make sure you're always snapped to the green axis. So I'll show you another way to snap as well. But it's a good idea to start drawing straight lines in SketchUp because that's what most projects will require, straight lines, especially for interior design and architecture projects. So I'm going to click again. So you can see I've created my second line. Now let's go ahead and close this box. So I'm going to again over over the red axis here. It's very user intu intuitive. So you should be able to easily snap to the red axis. Now the thing is, I would like to infer to this point here. So I get the exact measurement. So to do that, you simply need to hover, do not click. If you click, then it will create a face. So simply hover and then you can infer to that point. So if you move your mouse along that inferred point, it will sort of snap to that point and you can click. So this will be the exact same distance. And finally, you can click again on the last point there to create your face and then tap space bar and boom, you created your first face. So this was done without locking your line to a certain axis. 
By the way, a brief on the axis lines. The green axis is always pointed towards the north. So when I switch on shadows, if I go to my shadows in the default tray and switch this on, you can see the time is set about 1.30 and the date, I think about 7th of November. And since the time is set to the evening, we have the evening sun. So the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So since the sun is setting in the west, we have the shadow, a long shadow, which is falling at the back. So since the north is there, also, by the way, the sun direction is from the southeast to the southwest, sort of. So you always have the windows on the north side, the larger windows on the north side. And on the south side, you have smaller windows because that's where most of the sun, the solar radiation hits. I will be sharing some of these small tidbits that I've learned as an architect over the years as well. So this is the morning sun and the evening sun. So the green axis is always pointed towards the north in SketchUp. You can change that as well and I will show it to you later using the Solar North plugin. So let's switch off shadows and let's go back to the theme of this topic which is the line tool. So we created our first phase. So I spoke to you guys about the three entities that is the basic modeling principle in 3d software so we have the edges here the four edges then we have the four vertices as well you cannot select it for now we can use a plugin called vertex tools to select this but we'll talk about that later and then finally when once you connect all of these edges and vertices we have the face also if you click down the middle mouse button and orbit down you will notice that we have a reversed face so what this reverse face is, okay, let me go back so I'm smaller. So if you click down the middle mouse button and orbit it down, you can see that this is gray and this is white. So basically this means that this is the normals and this is where you need to apply the material. This is very important, especially when you're doing 3D rendering because it's always the normals where you apply the material on. So basically the front face is the front face of your surface and this back face here, this would be considered the back face of your surface. So always make sure to apply the material on the front face. And there are some exceptions, but this should help you create good renders and have no errors in your renders as well. And now let's learn how to lock our lines to the axis lines. So again, I'm going to click and release the button from my mouse. So left click. And now if you want to lock it along the red axis, you can tap the right arrow key. So once you tap the right arrow key, even if you hover over any side of the SketchUp viewport, it will always be locked to the red axis. So this way you can also add a measurement. So right now you can see the length at the bottom right. So let's give a 10 feet by 10 feet face. So I'm going to tap in 10 feet, 10 apostrophe and tap enter we're still active so now let's lock it to the green axis so you can do so by tapping the left arrow key this time so i'm going to tap in 10 feet and tap enter now we need to go back so we can of course infer sometimes the inference doesn't work so in that case you can tap the right arrow key again or what you can also do is i tapped escape by mistake so no worries I can simply left click again and now we're back in our line tool so you need to hold down the shift key now when you're holding down the shift key you cannot give a measurement but you can infer to the first point so I'm going to infer to the first point here and then I'm going to close by clicking here and I'm done creating a face sometimes when you create lines it may not create it on the right plane so you need to be careful when you cl click on the first point but generally when you click on the surface here it will create it on that top plane there so this is your first exercise which is to use the line tool i would recommend that you simply get in the habit of clicking and creating lines sometimes it may not create it in the right plane so this happens so if you'd like to create in the right plane how do you do that you lock it so you lock it to the red axis to the green axis Again, back to the red axis and you've created on the right plane. Now, if you want to delete stuff or if you want to undo, you can click on the undo button here. So you can see I've 
going back or you can also press hold down control z which is the undo button so undo and redo works and also of course we have the z axis here so if you'd like to snap it on the z axis activate the line tool click once hold down the top arrow key this time and you can also give a measurement let's say 10 feet and boom you can see that we've created a line there you can also connect these lines so we've created sort of a triangle on the c axis once you're done tap the space bar to go back to the select tool and we've just created our sort of a protractor in sketchup all right so another bonus tip for you guys is that if you're going to use the line tool and you want to update the measurement after you've applied the line you can do so as well so let's activate the line tool by tapping l click once and let's give a length of about 10 feet so i'm going to tap in 10 apostrophe and tap enter now i'm going to tap escape once so tap escape so this will get out of that line and you are still active within the command which means you can update this line which you've just created so right now it is about 10 feet now let's say you changed your mind and you want to make it to five feet you can tap in five apostrophe and tap enter so you can see the line updates automatically and then you get back to the line tool with the last endpoint active now let's tap escape again and let's give a new length let's say three feet and tap enter so you can see that the length changes tap escape again and now let's give the measurement in meters so let's say 3m and tap enter and you can notice that the it reads in meters as well even if you're using architectural feet and inches now if you do not tap escape and give a value uh, with a new line then it will activate it on the new line so let's say i give four meters here four m tap enter you can see that it creates a new line so you always tap escape and then you need to update the line accordingly now i hope you understood how to update the line after you applied it we can do the same in the other tools as well and i'll show it to you in the future videos all right so as an exercise i would like you to create a simple rectangle with the line tool so it can be about four feet each width and try to create a enclosed face and for those who are using metric you can use about one meter or 1.2 meters which is around four feet so that would be the base of our tetris model and in the later videos we'll learn how to create the box and a whole lot more so I'll see you guys next video cheers in this video i'll show you how to use the rectangle tool in sketchup enjoy all right so the rectangle tool is similar to the line tool but it comes with connected edges so to activate the rectangle tool you can click on the rectangle tool here from the toolbar or you can tap r on your keyboard which is the shortcut for the rectangle tool now again when you click for the first time please do not click and and press because that's not how it works in sketchup you need to click once leave the mouse key so that would be the first click for the rectangle tool and then you when you click the second time that's when it creates the rectangle now let's create a rectangle with some dimensions as well so left click on your mouse button and release and now let's give a dimension so you can see on the bottom right we have our dimensions and as i mentioned before you simply need to type in your dimension and tap enter so i'm going to type say for example 60 inches which is about five feet so you can tap in 60 and then comma 60 and tap enter so we created our first rectangle now in some cases comma may not work it depends on your country and the region you're working from for example in germany you may have to use semicolon in between the two dimensions and then tap enter so make sure that depending on your country you use the right notation while typing in the dimension but in most cases the comma should work to create your rectangle you can also create rectangles on other planes so right now we've created the rectangle on the flat xy plane so if you want to create it on the other planes you need to tap the arrow keys on your keyboard before you click 
now I'm going to tap, I've already activated the rectangle tool. So let's do that again. Let's tap space bar to go back to the select tool and tap R on our keyboard to activate the rectangle tool. Now let's click on any of the points. We can click on the origin here as well. And now you can tap the different arrow keys on your keyboard and it would snap to the different planes on SketchUp. You can also tap the arrow keys before you click, but it also works after you click the first point. So now I'm going to give a dimension here as well. So I'm going to tap in 10 apostrophe 6 inches, comma 10, maybe comma 5 feet, 6 inches, and then tap enter. So now you can see I'm using something called the tape measure tool. We'll come to this later. But right now you can see we've added it with the right dimensions. We can do so here as well. So now I'm not click. I'm not clicking. I'm changing the plane in real time. So now I've oriented it along the red plane. So I'm going to click. And then again, I can give the same dimension. So let's type in our dimension. So 10 feet. 6 inches, comma, 5 feet, and tap enter. So we've created two planes, which is on the XZ plane and YZ plane as well. And sometimes when you create rectangles, for example, when I'm creating it this way, you can see that it snaps to different points here. So if you'd like to snap it bang on the plane, on the flat plane, then you can tap the top arrow key. And now you can give a dimension here as well. So let's say 60 again for 5 feet, comma 60 and tap enter. So when you give the dimension without any apostrophe, it reads as inches with architectural feet and inches. Now another bonus tip for you guys is if you're using the rectangle tool, just like the line tool, you can update the dimensions after you've applied a rectangle or created a rectangle. So let's activate the rectangle tool, click once, and let's give our dimensions, say five feet, comma five feet, tap enter. Now we are still in the rectangle tool command. We are active in the rectangle tool command, which means we can change the dimensions in real time. So I'm gonna change this without tapping escape or spacebar. I'm just gonna add in the dimensions. Let's say 10 feet, comma 10 feet, and tap enter. So you can see that the rectangle size changes. You can also, of course, add in meters. So let's say five meters, comma, five meters and tap enter. Similarly in centimeters as well. Let's say 100 centimeters, comma, 100 centimeters, tap enter. So you can see that the rectangle updates in real time. But once you tap the spacebar tool, you're out of the command, which means now when you type, it will not update the rectangle. All right, so for your exercise, what you can do is you can create a box using the rectangle tool. So you can create a simple rectangle of any size that you like, maybe one meter by one meter. And similarly, I would like you to create rectangles on the other planes by locking it to the axis and then creating the rectangle accordingly. So try to create a box. And in the future videos, I'll show you a simpler way to create boxes and more using push-pull tool, offset tool, and a whole lot more. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'll show you how to use the offset tool in SketchUp for web. All right, so first up, let's create some rectangles that we learned how to create in the previous videos. So I'm gonna activate the rectangle tool by tapping R, click once and click the second time. So let's quick, quickly create some rectangles this way. You can go ahead and create them as well. Now I'm gonna activate the offset tool by tapping F on my keyboard. So that's the shortcut for the offset tool. Or you can click on the icon here as well. So generally when you tap on these shortcut keys, the icon will show up on the toolbar on the left as well. So F is for offset. Now there are multiple ways to use tools in SketchUp and I'll show you three ways. So one is activating the tool first and then you can click on any of these faces here. As you can see, when I hover on the face, it sort of highlights that face. You need to click once and release the mouse from your hand. 
That's the first click. So click and release. And then you can click the second time to create the offset. Sometimes when you click inside the face, you may notice that already creates the offset. So that may be a glitch with SketchUp for web. In that way, you can follow the second method, which is to click and hold down to the mouse. So I'm just holding down. You can see I've not left the mouse. And this way you can arbitrarily place your offset as well. And the third way is my preferred way and the way I work in SketchUp Pro is I select the face first and then I activate the offset tool and then I click once and click the second time to create the offset. Now again, I'm facing this problem in SketchUp for web where when I try to click, it already creates the offset sometimes and sometimes it lets me add the offset as well so for sketchup for web what you can do is let me create the rectangles again you can select the face activate the offset tool and when you click do not let go of the mouse you can drag outside or inside so if i drag it inside for example and let go of the mouse it creates the offset and also before you tap escape or tap space bar, which is the select tool, you can also give an offset after you've left let go of the mouse. So I'm going to give a distance say of about two feet and tap enter. And you can notice that it changes. You can also, after you given the distance, say for example, you changed your mind and you want to give four feet, you can tap four feet and tap enter. So let me just demonstrate that again, just in case you're confused. So you can also notice that I'm also tapping spacebar quite a lot to switch between the tools. Now with the offset tool, you can overlap lines as well, but not a single line. So for example, we have some lines here. So I'm going to select all of them, activate the offset tool, click and hold down to the mouse button. And you can see that I can offset lines as well. But if I draw a single line like this and use the offset key you can notice that I cannot offset a single line so you can offset multiple lines and faces but not a single line now as a bonus tip what I will show you is for example if I draw a rectangle here and connect these two faces and then I'm going to erase some of these lines here so I'm going to activate the eraser tool we'll talk about the eraser tool in the next video but tap E to activate the eraser tool and simply drag along the lines hold down to the mouse button and drag you can notice that We've deleted our lines. Now let's activate the offset tool, click and hold down. And now you can notice that when I try to offset it, the lines do not overlap, especially when they reach the intersection point. So if you would like to overlap these lines, then tap Alt on your keyboard. So you can see the icon changes or it's command on Mac. And now you can see that the lines overlap. So if you tap Alt, it will toggle the overlap option when using the offset tool. All right, so here's another bonus tip for you guys. Let's say you want to create some concentric rectangles around this face here. So I'm going to select this face, use the offset tool, click and drag. And let's give an offset of about two feet or 600 mm and tap enter. Now, if you want to repeat this, you'll need to create the offset again and then give in a value. But there's another shortcut. What you can do is simply select the face, activate the offset tool. And when you double click, you can notice that it creates the offset from the previous value. So select the face, activate the offset tool and double click and it'll create that face. You can also activate the offset tool and go to any face, for example, here and double click to create those concentric rectangles. You can do the same here as well, here as well. So it will always offset by two feet from the edges. So I'll see you guys in the next video where we learn how to use the eraser tool and erase some of the lines which we do not require. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the eraser tool in SketchUp for web. Let's go. All right. So this is our exercise file from the previous video, which is offset tool. Now to activate the eraser tool, you can tap E on your keyboard. So that's the shortcut for the eraser tool, or you will find it right below the select tool. Now to use the eraser tool, you need to left click and make sure you're not let go of that mouse button. So make sure to left click and hold down to that mouse button. And then you can go ahead and start deleting the elements in your SketchUp.
seen. So whatever comes in the path of this eraser will get deleted, which includes shapes and the faces and edges. And also, if you drag the selection over groups, for example, our element here, you can see the entire object gets deleted. And it only gets deleted once you let go of the mouse. So watch what happens when I let go of the mouse. Boom, everything gets deleted. So that's one way to delete stuff. I'm going to undo. So you can just click on undo button here and everything comes back. Let's go back to the select tool. So tap space. So that's our select tool. And sometimes you may have to delete stuff using the select tool as well. So in that way, for example, I want to select just this face inside. So I can double click on the faces and edges. And when I tap delete, you can see that face and edge gets deleted. So that's that happens when I double click on the face. Let me undo and let me just select only the face without the edges and then tap delete. Then you can notice that the lines remain and only the face inside gets deleted. Now the eraser tool doesn't work on a face. It generally works on the edges of a face and once the edges go and if it's not connected, you can see that the face also goes away. And also get into the habit of switching between the eraser tools, E for the eraser and spacebar for the select tool. So you will be switching between these tools quite a lot in your daily workflows in SketchUp. All right, so now I'm gonna show you some bonus tips using the eraser tool. So you can also delete faces by right clicking on a face and clicking on erase. So this is another way, but the easiest is to simply select that face and tap delete on your keyboard. Now let's say, for example, you want to hide a line and not delete them. So let's activate the eraser tool. And now you can tap shift on your keyboard. You can notice the icon changes. And this is the hide feature within the eraser tool. So now if you click and hold down on your mouse and start to drag around, it will hide those lines. Let's say you want to bring back those lines. In that case, you can tap Alt on your keyboard or Command on Mac. And then simply go back and drag on the hidden lines to show those lines back. Now here we have an example of a simple extrusion with multiple sides. So let's say we want to smoothen out the edges here. We can achieve that using the eraser tool. So let's activate the eraser tool by tapping E. And this time I'm going to tap Control on my keyboard or Option on Mac. And then I can drag around the cylinder to smoothen out the edges. So now you can see that the edges are smooth. You can also drag around on the top and bottom to create a sort of a smooth cylinder. Now let's say you changed your mind, you want to bring back those lines, then tap Alt on your keyboard or Command on Mac to show those lines, and then start dragging around those lines to bring back the lines and also unsmooth the surface. All right, so here's another cool tip for you guys. If you want to select some lines in SketchUp randomly, especially if you're working on complex models and you want to select some random lines. So let's activate the eraser tool and let's click and hold down on the mouse and start dragging. And let's select some lines here that we would potentially use. Something like this. And now without letting go on the mouse, if you let go, it will, of course, delete them. So without letting go, just tap space on your keyboard. So if you notice, now I've selected all of these lines using the eraser tool. So again, just activate the eraser tool, click and hold down and just go through the random selection that you would like to select. And without letting go, tap the space bar on your keyboard. So this would make a selection of those lines and you can do whatever you like with that selection. So this is a bonus tip for you guys. All right, so that was a quick video into the eraser tool. In the next video, I'll show you how to add colors to these objects as well using the material window in our default ray on the right here. Here you go. So you're going to learn how to use this in the next video. Cheers. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the materials window in SketchUp for web. Let's go. All right. So to activate the material window, you can tap B on your keyboard. So that will activate the material window and also show up the materials. So B stands for the bucket tool. You can see the icon also change to, changes to the bucket icon. Or what you can do is just go to your default ray here and there you would find the materials icon. So if you click on that, it will open up the material window. But in most cases, you would 
generally be tapping B on your keyboard. You can also notice that when I open the materials window, the bucket tool automatically gets on as well. So get into the habit of tapping B on your keyboard to activate the bucket tool. All right. So in the materials window, you can see we have this home button here, which means that all these materials here are part of our 2D figure. So all these colors belong to this 2D figure tie. So if you like to check the name, you can do so as well. So on the bottom, we have something called purge unused material and this three options here. So if you click, you can change this to view list and you can notice that these are all colors that belong to tie. Now let's say, for example, you want to use some of these colors on the other faces in SketchUp. So activate the bucket tool and hold down the Alt key on your keyboard. So this would activate the sample paint tool. So you can sample any of the colors. For example, you can sample blue and then you can click once and let go of the mouse. So click once and let go of the mouse. Release the mouse key, which means that you've painted on an object. So click and release to paint objects. So you can sample any color and then paint away on your faces. You can also, of course, select the materials from your material window and then apply the material this way as well by simply clicking and releasing on your mouse. So these are the colors of tie. Now, let's say, for example, you want to apply some realistic materials on the right next to the home button. We have browse. So if you click on that, you can see we have various categories here that we can select from. So we have glass and mirrors, landscape, fencing, metal, patterns, roofing. So let's say, for example, you want to add some roofing material. So you can select this roofing um, scallop mate and then apply it. And you can notice that the material has been applied. Now, let's say, for example, you apply the material and you want to increase the scale of this material. You can do so as well. So in that case, you just need to go back to home. You need to select this material and then you'll find this option called edit material. So let's click on edit. And right now you can see the width is set about two feet. So if you change this to say 10 and tap on your tab key, you will notice that the scale changes. So if you tap, tap on your tab key, it generally just switches and it should update in SketchUp as well. So 10 feet seems a bit too big. So let's try five feet tap the tab key. You can also change the color. So you can see right next to colorize, we have this orange color. You can change the color of this as well. And finally, this has a texture. So if you click on this, you can also change the texture, but we'll do that later. By the way, this width is linked to the height. So if you unlink this and change the height here to say 10 feet, then that would distort the texture. So I would highly recommend that you stick with the regular values that comes preloaded with these textures. And once you're done, click on the done key and you're done with placing a texture in SketchUp for web. Now let's say for example, you would like to use textures from other models. I will show you a quick hack that you can do using 3D Varrows. So I will show you briefly on what 3D Varrows can do for you. So I'm going to click on 3D Varrows here and I'm going to search for materials. You can see that I've already searched for that material. Go to models and then we have this material here. You can select any other model as well, but I'm going to open this. Then when you scroll down, you will find this material count. So simply click on that and you can see that the various materials of that model show up here. So you can go ahead and actually download this to your project. So for example, if you want to apply this material to your project, you can click on download. And boom, it actually shows up in your materials. And you can also go ahead and download this locally to your computer as well. So if you click on download, you can notice that it gets saved as a .skm file. So you can select that file or this material and then apply it on your objects. So you can see we have a pretty good material that we've got from 3D Warehouse. So that's a quick hack for you guys. And as a bonus tip while using the bucket tool in SketchUp. And finally, what I'd also like to show you guys is that you can rename the files. So you can simply type in your name here. 
So I'm going to call this Fundamax and then click on Done. So that's a good way to rename your file. So if I go to my list here, you can see that our Fundamax material is intact. All right, so now I'm going to demonstrate the bucket tool with the modifier keys here, which you see at the bottom. You can open this exercise file to follow along. This is the Lego block that we'll create shortly. Now let's say, for example, you want to replace all of these blue materials with the yellow material here. So in that case, you can sample this material. So let's hold down Alt or Command on Mac and click on this material to sample it. And then you will need to painstakingly, individually, paint these materials but with the modifier key so let me undo and go back a bit if you tap the shift key on your keyboard you will notice the icon changes of the bucket tool and now if you click on any of the face with a similar material boom all of those materials change as well so that is going to paint all the matching materials in your model now let's say for example you want to replace the material here with this material and not affect the other ones in your model then tap bucket tool and sample this material by holding down command on mac or alt on windows and this time tap control on your keyboard or option on mac and now if you click on a connected face all the adjacent faces or connected faces of that object will change Finally, if you hold down Shift and Control or Option and Shift on Mac and then click on this object here, it will replace the materials on the selected object. So that is the modifier key. And you can also, of course, use the Select tool and apply materials. So if you select all of these objects here and select any material and then click and release, you can notice that the, all the objects change. So go ahead and play around with the bucket tool in SketchUp. In most cases, you'll only be using the Shift modifier key to replace all the similar materials with another material in SketchUp. All right, so we've done using the main tools. Now we'll learn how to create some 3D using the push-pull tool in the next video. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'll show you how to use the push-pull tool to finally create some 3D in our model. And we'll also learn how to create our Tetris model. Let's go. Okay, so to activate the push-pull tool, you can click on the icon here. So that's the push-pull tool. Or, as always, tap the P key on your keyboard, which is the shortcut for the push-pull tool. So this will activate the push-pull tool. And once it's activated, you simply need to click on any of these faces. You can see when I hover over these faces, it gets pre-selected. So you will know which face you are going to extrude up as well. So I'm going to click on this inside face here. Click and release once the mouse. And then you can hover, you can either go up or you can go down as well. So let's go up and then click again to create the extrusion. You can also add a dimension. So you can click once, release and you can hover up or hover down. And you can see at the bottom right we have the distance. So I'm going to give say about 5 feet and tap enter. Now here's a trick since we gave the previous extrusion or here we've gone down to about five feet i would like to have the same effect on the other ones as well so in that case you just need to hover on the face and then double click to create that extrusion down to about five feet so if you check this you can see that is five feet you can also do it up as well so if you click once and hover up you can see that i'm going to give an extrusion say five or say ten feet and tap enter and then if you hover over any of these faces and double click, it will take the previous value that you just applied. So that's one way to create an extrusion. You can also click and drag, like how I mentioned in the offset tool, click and drag. You don't need to let go of the mouse. This is another way you can choose what works best. But in my preferred way is to always click and release the mouse and then click again to create the extrusion. So I'm just going to click and release to create that extrusion. You can also snap these extrusions to the previous heights. So if you click here once, I'm going to release the mouse, you can snap to this point or to this point or to this point or to even this point. So that's another way to create your extrusions. Now, let's say, for example, you want to maintain this face and create 
an additional phase. That's how we're going to create our Tetris models. You can tap Control on your keyboard or Option on Mac. So this will add to the extrusion. So for example, if I click here, you can see that this will create a loop around, which means it retains that face there and it creates this extra extrusion here. Now, if I delete that top face, you can see that it retains that face there and created that extra extrusion. Let me just undo. You can, of course, only extrude faces. You cannot extrude lines. So that's something which you need to keep in mind as well. Now, another trick is once you extrude an object, you can also change the value of the extrusion. So right now you can see the distance. The distance is set at 23 feet. Now, without tapping escape or heading back to the select tool, I'm going to tap the value, which is 10 feet and tap enter. And you can see it, see that it changes in real time. So even after creating the extrusion, before you tap the escape or the select tool, you can add in a value and it will change in real time. Now, here's another bonus tip for you guys whilst using the push pull tool. So let's say, for example, I draw an irregular shape here and push this up. Now, when you use the push pull tool for this face, for example, and push it out, it will simply create the extrusion perpendicular to this face. But let's say, for example, you want to push this entire face out and sort of stretch it, you can do so using the push pull tool. We can, of course, use the move tool to achieve this as shown. We'll talk about this later. But to use the stretch command within push pull tool, all you need to do is select the face, activate the push pull tool. And at the bottom, you can see we have toggle stretch mode. So tap Alt or Command on Mac. And now when you click on the face, it will simply stretch that face. So this was a bonus tip for you guys. I personally do not use the push pull tool to stretch. I generally use the move tool, but this is just a bonus hidden feature in the push pull tool. All right, so now we learned how to use the push pull tool. So the next video, we'll do a quick exercise and create our first Tetris model using all the basic tools that we've learned so far. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So we're going to create our first Tetris model using the tools that we've learned so far. So let's go to create new and click on architectural feet and inches. I'm going to delete type for now as well. So let's activate the rectangle tool, which is R on your keyboard. And then click on the origin there. So that's the first click. Now we can give a dimension as well. Let's make it at a larger scale, we can always scale it down later. I'll show you how to use the scale tool later as well. So in this case, I'm going to tap 10. Or let's tap it in inches so that it's easier for you guys. So I'm going to tap in 60, which is 5 feet, comma, 60 and tap enter. So we made our base face. Also, make sure to snap it by tapping the top arrow key when you're creating these rectangles. I did not use a top arrow key this time because there's not many models here. But when there are models, it may snap to those models and it's always a good idea to always snap before creating rectangles. All right, so now I'm gonna select this face, use the push pull tool and I'm gonna push this up. So click once, release the mouse and now I'm gonna push this up by 60 inches. So tap in 60 and tap enter. So we have our cube here. Now, Tetris models comes in various shapes. You guys can go ahead and create your favorite shape. So to create this, I'm going to tap control on my keyboard. So this will add the plus button, which means it will retain this face here. So I'm going to click again and I'm going to tap 60 inches and tap enter. Now, like I mentioned in the previous video, now if you double tap on any of the faces, it will take the previous value which you added, which was 60 inches. So I'm going to create a simple Tetris model like this, like so. Uh, I'll show you another exercise and then you guys can go ahead and create the rest of the Tetris models that comes to your mind. So I'm going to cl click once again and I'm going to give 60, comma 60 and tap enter. And then I'm going to double click so you can see it retains that value. And before I double click here, you can see that now it just extends it. So I'd act actually like to retain that face there. So I'm going to tap Control Z, tap Control on my keyboard. You just need to tap. You don't need to tap and hold down. Just tap once and the plus button shows up. 
and then double click to create that rectangle or that box. Sometimes you may create these loops like this by mistake. So just undo. So control Z to undo. And then if you double click now, it will read the previous value, which was I think about one inch. So undo and then you will need to add it again. So be a bit careful when you're creating these Tetris blocks. So this is another cool Tetris block that we can add. So go ahead and create rest of the Tetris models using the tools I've just taught you so far. And now what I would like to demonstrate is why I do not like to prefer modeling like this because if I use the eraser tool and let's say for example, I want to delete just this box and let's say I delete this line, then you can see that all these faces and edges remain. Ideally, when I run my eraser tool around these boxes, I want the entire box to get deleted. And that's why it's very useful to model in groups. And I'll show you how to use groups in the next video. So this was your first exercise. Please do post it in our community group for everyone to see. This is your first step towards learning SketchUp. And it's a very easy software as you can see. And I'll show you step by step on how you can take these basic skills as your foundation and create more complex models, interior design spaces, architectural buildings, and more. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. All right, so this is a quick video on reminding you guys to always save your work. So I'm gonna save this model out. So you can go to file, save as. And if you've deleted any materials, now for example, if you deleted die, it asks us whether you want to purge the unused items. Now I would highly recommend that you always check your model before purging because you may want to retain some of the models or the materials. So in my case, I do not need those materials. So I'm going to click on purge all, click on new model, and then you can add a name to your model. Now, since I've already named my model, I already saved this model, by the way, I can click on that file, which I want to overwrite, and I'm going to click on yes. Now, if I go to my materials window here, you can see there's no materials in our scene because we've purged all of those materials. So you would need to add a new material and then apply it on our Tetris model. Let's do that quickly as well because let's not keep our Tetris models plain unless you reach level 145. So let's go to colors here and let's select any color. Let's select this color and then you can select all of the materials. So do a drag selection from top left to bottom right. Activate the bucket tool by tapping B on your keyboard and then apply the material. You can also apply it individually, but it's ideally better to select all of it. You can triple click as well, like I mentioned before. So let's select this yellow color and then apply it on our material. So that is a quick video into saving and also a bonus tip on applying materials as well. The next video, I'll show you how to use groups and my preferred way of modeling in SketchUp is by using groups. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So now before we start learning how to use groups and components, I'd like to show you how to use the move tool in SketchUp. So this is a very important tool and which you will be using quite a lot in SketchUp. So to activate the move tool, you can tap M on your keyboard. So that will activate the move tool. Now, before you activate the move tool, you will need to make a selection of what you would like to move. Now, the problem is since these are not in groups, if I select any of these edges or the vertex here, you can see the entire face starts to move and distort the geometry of this box. So what I will do is I will first make a selection so I'm going to click here, do a drag selection from top left to bottom right. We're going to select this entire entity because it is connected. And then I will tap the move tool. So tap M on your keyboard to move. And similarly to the other tools, what you can do is just click and release the mouse. So that's the first click, left click, and then you can drag to any of the sides. So you can also snap while dragging. So if you like to move it along the green axis, simply snap by tapping the left arrow key. If you want to move it along the red axis, it's the right arrow key. And if you want to move it on the blue axis, it's the top arrow key. So I'm going to move it up. So let's say we want to move it here to this point here. And I can simply constrain online from point and click again to move my object. Now, when you're a new user in SketchUp, you will notice that there is no command to copy stuff in SketchUp. That's because it's hidden within the move tool. So let's 
move this object again but let's make a copy of this object so you can see all of it is selected again so i do not have to exit the move tool i can simply click any of these endpoints here so click once and i'm going to snap it again to the blue axis and i'm going to tap control this time so you can see when i tap control it makes a copy of that entity so i can copy it to this point here and then i can click again to create our copy of this element now since this is not a group this is what happens if i want to move only this bottom half i cannot do so because it is now connected to the top element as well so for example if i select these elements here i'm doing a drag selection from top right to bottom left and if i make a copy you can see since it is connected i will not be able to move this object but we'll fix that once we learn how to use groups in sketchup now another cool feature that i would like to show you guys is array copy and which is also hidden within sketchup move tool so for example if i select this and activate the move tool again and tap control so this is going to make a copy so i'm going to click here at this end point here i'm going to click once release the mouse and then i'm going to snap it to the green axis so let's tap the left arrow key to snap it and then i'm going to give a distance as well so you can see on the bottom right right now it's at 18 feet let's say 5 feet and tap enter so 5 feet is 16 inches which is a little too close so without tapping the escape key or the select tool we can again change the value in real time so i'm going to tap in 10 feet and tap enter so that changes i like this value better so it moves the object by 10 feet so you can also update the distance after you moved an object in real time now let me show you another tip so i'm going to select this object here let's select all of it so make sure you make the right selection and then let's tap m which is to copy tap control now i'm going to select from this point here and then i'm going to move it to this point so that it retains that distance so i'm going to click again so i hope you know how to move now which is to click which is select object activate the move tool click and release and click and release the second time to copy or move your object so in this case i've copied it and now again before tapping the escape key or the select tool what you can do is you can tap x which is to multiply and tap 10 and tap enter now sometimes x may not work so in that case you can use the asterisk symbol as well in, but in most scenarios the x key on your keyboard should help you array copy in sketchup so you can see i have copied this 10 times over to the other side you can also for example let's copy this so i'm going to select all of these objects and i'm going to use the move tool again so tap m tap control to make a copy or option on your mac click on the end point once and then snap it to the green axis now i'm going to move it to this edge here to this current edge and now i'm going to divide this distance by 10 equal numbers so you can click on the slash symbol so you can see distance slash and then tap your value which is 10 and then tap enter So you can see right now I've divided that equally by 10 times as well. All right, so here's another bonus tip for you guys. I'm going to delete some of these elements. So let me just make a drag selection this way and just select all of these and click on delete. I can delete this big object here as well. All right, perfect. Now let's select this Lego this status block. Activate the move tool, tap control to make a copy. Click once and release. snap it to the green axis by tapping the left arrow key and now let's place this at a distance of about 10 feet and tap enter so after you placed or copied an object you can also of course array copy it so how do you do that you tap in x10 and tap enter so that is when you do not exit the command so now we are still active in the command which means we can also change the distance between these objects So now let's say for example I want to increase the spacing to 20 feet so I'm just going to type in 20 feet and tap enter. So you can see that increases the spacing 
and we are still active on the command which means again we can change this to say x5 and tap enter x3 and you get the idea of how this works we can also of course divide an object so let me just select this faces and edges here you activate the move tool tap control to make copy or option on mac let's snap it on the red axis which is the right arrow key and let's place it at a distance of about 100 feet you can see in the bottom right click to place that object let's divide this by say six and let's increase the spacing now so we can increase it by increasing the overall distance so i'll tap in 200 feet and tap enter so you can see we've increased the overall spacing and we're still active in the command which means we can also divide this further so divide by 10 and you get the idea of how this works now there's another bonus tip for you guys using the move tool so if you select all of these objects tap m tap control once or option on mac and tap control again so you're tapping control twice which means now we are active in the stamp mode in the move tool in sketchup so now if i click and i click again you can see i've placed that object but i'm still active in the copy mode which means i can place multiple items using this mode so you need to select all of these objects tap m to activate the move tool tap control twice or tap option twice on mac so this would switch to the stamp mode and then simply go ahead and stamp your object all over sketchup all right so in the next video i'll show you how to use groups and components and which is the essential foundation for your sketchup modeling process so i'll see you guys in the next video cheers hey guys welcome back i hope you're liking the course so far now let's learn how to use groups and components in SketchUp. All right, so now you can see that I've created different groups here as of this Tetris model. And the benefit is that I can move this out separately as an entity. So you can see it, it's not connected to that face or edge as shown in the previous video, and I can move it independently of the original object. And also if I use the eraser tool, and if I click on delete here, the entire box gets deleted. So let's learn to create this from scratch. So I'm going to delete all of our boxes or groups and let's activate the rectangle tool again. Click on this endpoint here. Let's give our dimension. So 60 comma 60 and some cases, like I mentioned before, comma doesn't work. So try using semicolon. It should work and then tap enter. All right. And let's give a height as well. So 60 inches. So we have a five feet by five feet by five feet cuboid. Now I'm going to make this entire entity a group. So you can triple click to select all the faces and edges which are connected. Or you can also make a drag selection to select all of that. And then you can right click and click on make group. We'll come back to competence as well, but let's learn how to use groups. So we created our first group in SketchUp. So how do I know this is a group? You can see if I click once on this object, I'm just clicking once, you can see the entire entity gets selected. And now if I double click on this object, we have entered the group. So this is what helps modeling in SketchUp nicer as well. I'll show you quickly once we create copies of this group. So if you enter the group, you'll notice this dashed line outside, which means we are currently inside this group so whatever changes we make will be part of this group so for example if i create a rectangle now you can see that this bounding box gets bigger and now if i tap escape and if i select this group you can see that it's a much larger group because we've made this entity inside the group so let's double click this group again so i've double clicked to enter the group you need to double click a bit faster to enter the group and then select this element and click on delete now you can see that the bounding box gets smaller. All right, so I made our first entity. So let's make a copy of this group. So I'm going to tap M on my keyboard, which is the move tool. Tap control to make a copy. And I'm going to click from this bottom corner here. And I'm going to move it to this corner here. You can also snap it by tapping the right arrow key and then snap it to that point. So let's copy this way as well. So let's copy here too. So it's very easy to copy stuff once you've made it 
a group you do not do have to do a drag selection you can simply just click once and the entire entity gets selected also if you notice if i go to my outliner window here on the right you can see we've created four groups here and you can also hide these groups individually from the outliner window now let's say for example i would like to select all of these groups and not all of them individually you can of course make a drag selection but i would like to make a nested group which means all of these elements will be nested inside a main group so i'm going to select all of these elements here right click and click on make group again and if you notice on the outliner we have our main group here under which we have our sub groups so if you hide this all the elements get hidden so now we have our main group and if i enter we have our nested groups and if i enter again we've entered the nested group as well so groups helps gives you a hierarchy to your model and which will also help organize your model better as well so i'm going to click again outside so if i click outside the box you can see we exit those nested levels and come out of the main group how do you, i know i'm outside the group there's no bounding box on the group so if i double click you can see the bounding box gets smaller the main group gets lighter as well so that's how you know you're in the main group you can also exit the group by tapping escape on your keyboard to exit the groups so i am now i am on the main viewport and not inside any of the group now here's another bonus tip for you guys so for example when i enter a particular group let's actually make a copy of this group so i'm going to select this entire main group and make a copy i hope you know how to make a copy by now select the element use the move tool tap control click once release and click the second time release to create a copy all right so now what i would like to do is when i enter this group i will actually like to hide rest of the model so that i can focus only on this model and detail it more better so to do that where i want to focus only on this model you can of course see that rest of the model gets grayed out but what if you'd like to hide it so in that case in your default ray on the right when you go to display so you can see we have this glasses icon here so click on that and in the bottom you can see hide rest of the model so if you switch this on you can see the rest of the model gets hidden now if you leave this on and let's say for example you enter this group you can see only this group is shown and rest of the model is hidden so when you double click to enter the rest of the model gets hidden automatically also i generally double click but people also select the group and tap enter to enter the group so that's another tip for you guys let's switch off hide rest of the model for now but that's a bonus tip for you guys for using groups all right so we've made groups now let's say for example i would not like to have the main group i would like to like to just have the entities individually so in that case you can also explode a group so to explode a group you can right click on the object and click on explode so when you explode the group you can see that the main group goes away and we have our nested groups back so these are not inside any main groups and this itself is the main group now so now you can move these individually as well and if i explode this group again so if i right click and click on explode you can see we're back to our basic faces lines edges and our vertices all right so and one last tip that i would like to show you guys is that groups can only be created by a bunch of lines or faces so if you have a single line you cannot make this a group you can see i can just select it and there's no option to create a group but if you have two lines and if you select both those lines and right click you can make that a group but of course you generally do not make two lines a group you generally make a face with a bunch of lines a group or a extrusion a group so that is a quick tip for you guys as well all right so another last tip for you guys is that if i move this object let's say i'm going to move this here and if i sort of hover you can see that we have these grips now you can use this grip so if you hover on any of these red buttons here the grip shows up so if you click once release the mouse you can sort of rotate it as well in sketchup so the rotate tool will only show up 
if you have a group in SketchUp. It doesn't show up if it's a simple face. Now, for example, you have the simple face here. So if I use the move tool, it doesn't show up. Only if it's a group or a component. And if I use the move tool here, you can notice that I can rotate it using that grip tool. Now, this grip tool is in the settings, the rotate grip. So if I go to my app settings here, you can see show move tool rotation grips. So if I switch this off and then use the move tool, you can notice that the grip tool doesn't show up. Also, when it doesn't show up, you can see the back end of the face, which is pretty handy. So if you hover off on any of these vertices, you can also see the back end, which means you can select that and then place it on any part. So that's a quick tip for you guys as well. We'll create a specific video on the rotate tool because we'll be using the rotate tool quite a lot apart from the move grip. But in my case, I use the show move rotation grips. So I'll switch that on and I'll leave that on there. If you hover correctly, I think even the back face when that is on also shows up. So not to worry. But to use the rotate grip, you just need to hover on these plus points here and you should rotate on any direction you like. Or you can also give the angle on the bottom right, you see the angle. So you can give about 60 degrees. And so, so that's a quick bonus tip for you guys in using groups in SketchUp. Now, what sets the group apart from components is that each of these elements are individual entities with unique properties. So for example, if I enter this group and push this out by 60, you can see none of the other groups get updated. So I will need to individually go into each of the groups and update them to make them match the previous group. So that would be a lot of work, especially if you have a lot of models and that's where components come in handy. So in the next video, we'll learn how to use components and how components can help you save a lot of time, especially if you have multiple same instances of that same component. So I hope you guys like this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, congrats on finishing half of the course. Now, if you'd like to test your skills, I've created a short quiz and you can go ahead and see how much you've learned from the course so far. So you'll find the link in the description. Go ahead, test out the quiz and then continue along with the rest of the course. Now, if you get stuck at some questions, no worries. Simply come back to the course, finish the course and towards the end, take the quiz again. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'll show you how to use components in SketchUp for web. Let's go. All right. So in the previous video, we learned how to create groups. And the only con about using groups is that if you update one instance of the group, it doesn't update the others because each instance of a group is unique. But in components, if you make a copy of a component and if you change one component, it affects all the similar component instances. So let me show that to you by example. So let's create a component first. So similarly, in components, you need a bunch of lines and faces to make it a component. So I'm going to select all of these lines and faces here, which is our box, right? Click on it and click on make component. So when you click on make component, this dialog box opens. So you can give a name for this box. So I'm going to give this as Tetrix Tetris box simple. Then you can also give a description. In case you want to detail out what this model is. Sometimes you do give a description. Most cases you do not. It depends on what you are modeling. Now glue tool lets you glue this object here to any of the other groups or components. We'll talk about the glue tool shortly, but let's stick to how components work. And then we also have something called cut opening. So if you switch this on, the component will make an opening through whatever it is intersecting. So we'll talk about that later as well. And always face ca camera is similar to our 2D figure in SketchUp, where it is always facing camera when each time you orbit. So in this case, we do not need to switch this on. So we leave that off as well. We also have the shadows face sun feature. Now these two features here work well on a 2D figure, like for example, the SketchUp 2D figure. So we'll work on this later for now. So we've created our basic component. You can also notice that we've the axis is being added to the component. So let's click on OK to create this component. All right, so I've created my first component. Now let's see what happens when you make a copy of this component and make changes to the first instance or even the other instances. 
So I'm going to use the move tool, tap M, tap control to make a copy or option on Mac. Click once and click the second time. And I'm going to tap this or move it by five. So X5 and enter. So that is array copy while you are active in the move tool. Now watch what happens when I enter one of these components. So I'm double clicking to enter the component or you can select the component and tap enter on your keyboard as well. And let's use the push pull tool. So I'm going to use the push pull tool. Just activate it by tapping P. Click once, release the mouse, and then you can orbit and or you can hover to the top here and click the second time to create that change. So you can notice that all of the instances of the same component has been updated in real time. So you can change one instance of that component and it will update the others as well. Now let's say for example, you do not want to affect the last component. So what you can do is you can select this component, right click and click on make unique. So once you make this a unique component, it will be a separate entity. So if I go back to this component and make changes, it will not affect this component. So this is a unique component that you've just made. And if I make a copy of this component and change one, then it would affect the similar one. So I hope you got an idea of when to use make unique as well in case you need to make that as a separate component of your model. Also, since I've made two sets of components, it will show up in the component window. So you can go to your components here. And you can notice we've created our Tetris box simple and a copy of this Tetris box simple. So this is a large one. So you can also drag. So now, for example, if I delete all of these components, it's still part of the SketchUp file. So if you want to use the same components, what you can do, you go to your components window here. And then you can see these two components here. Just simply click once, release the mouse. And then when you click again, it will show up in your SketchUp viewport. So let's place the other component here as well. Now let's say, for example, you want to create a component from a group. You can do so as well. So just select the group, right click and click on make component. So that would convert the group to a component. So you can always convert groups to components, but you cannot convert a component to a group because once you make a component, it's always a component. So I hope you keep that in mind as well. So let's call this status box simple. Two. And you cannot have the same name as another component in your model. So you'll have to give a unique name. So let's call this status box simple two. Now, if you want to glue this, for example, to any of the surfaces, you can do so as well. So let's click on any here and then click on OK. So now you can see it's been created here, Tetris box simple two. So now I would like to glue it on this side of the wall. You can do so, just click once. And now you can see it sort of sticks to any of the sides of that component or group. It also attaches itself to the group. So I'm going to place it here. So now you can see it's glued on to this object. Uh, so, but if I add the Tetris box simple, so let's add this in. You can see it doesn't glue on to the surface. It rather intersects with the object. So if you switch on glue, then it will glue on to these objects here in SketchUp. Let's quickly create another component. So I'm just going to push this up. And let's select this. Right click, make component. Call this Tetris box simple. Three. And let's, this time, just make sure it glues on a horizontal surface. So let's click on horizontal. You can see that it changes the axis here as well. And let's click on OK. So now we created Tetris box simple. So now if I drag this in, you can notice that we have this no symbol next to the select tool. So it will not place your object on any vertical surface and it will only place it on horizontal surfaces. So if I hover here on the top, it will place it there. But if I click again, and if I try to place it on the vertical surface, it will not. It will only be applied on a horizontal surface. Similarly, you can also create components. So let's make this a component. And you can also place it only on a vertical surface as well. I'm going to leave definition as is. Click on OK. So we have component here, component 1. 
and now you can see it will only place it on the vertical surface so this comes in handy in case you made certain decor or objects that you need to place on a furniture table or on the wall so that comes in handy when you are creating components or you can select any as well to glue the component on you can also of course place a component on a slope and this comes in really handy when you're placing for example solar panels on roofs and more so i'm just going to rotate this using the rotate tool we'll talk about the rotate tool in another video soon and i'm just going to scale this we'll talk about the scale tool as well in another video and now what i'm going to do is i'll probably select this block here right click this lego block so right click and click on make component call this lego block or whatever you want to call it and then let's click on glue to sloped so now let's click on ok and now you can see it will show up in our component window here as well lego block so let's click on that and now when you try to place it, it will not place on horizontal and vertical surfaces but if you have a slope surface you can see that you can place this object on a slope surface and if you're using the stamp tool then you can place it multiple times and since this is a component if you select one and edit one object it will edit the others as well now here's another cool bonus tip for you guys so if you'd like to make a particular component unique and not follow the other ones you need to right click and click on make unique but you can also select a bunch of components together and click on make unique so i'm just going to make a drag selection this way and select these three components here right click and then i click on make unique so all these three elements here are similar instances so if i enter one component here for example if i select any of these groups inside this main component you can notice that only these three elements get affected and these two are unique in their own way as well so that was a bonus tip for you guys you can also select multiple components and make unique in sketchup as well so we'll be working with components quite a lot and groups of course in this course so this was just an introduction into components and we'll learn how to use this in real life projects as well so i'll see you guys in the next video cheers in this video i'm going to show you how to use the rotate tool in sketchup let's go all right so to activate the rotate tool you can tap q on your keyboard so that's the shortcut for rotate in sketchup you cannot use r because it is for the rectangle tool so q is a shortcut for rotating in sketchup you can also find the icon right below the move icon here so you can use this icon here to activate the rotate tool now if you hover on any of these objects you can see that it gets selected let's select this main group here so you can click once first mention the reference line it is going to rotate from so we've selected the point which we want to rotate from now we need to select the reference line so we're going to re rotate from this reference line the red axis so i'm going to click once and then i'm going to rotate this by say 90 degrees so you can tap in 90 and tap enter so that's how you rotate in sketchup now what i would actually like to do is first select the object and then activate the rotate tool so i'm going to select this object here and then i'm going to click on the rotate icon or tab q on my keyboard to activate it and then i'm going to make sure now you can see that when i hover over this point here it sort of snaps to the other planes as well so if i want to snap it right on the flat plane i can tap the top arrow key so this way even if i go to the vertical side it will not snap to that plane it will always be snapped on the x y plane so now i can click once then i can select the reference line generally you select it along the box so i'm going to select this reference line here and i'm going to rotate it by say 45 degrees you can also rotate it along the other planes as well so if i select this object here tap q to activate the rotate tool and if i want to snap it on the red axis then what do i tap i tap the right arrow key so now it is locked into that plane and now i can rotate it to say about 45 degrees i'm going to type in 45 and tap enter so we've learned how to rotate on different planes as well now i'll show you some exceptions now for example this object here when i want to rotate it let's say on this face here and when i try to snap you can see that it snaps to the xy plane and even if i tap right arrow key or left arrow key 
you can see it's not the right plane that I want to rotate from. So the small trick is when you want to rotate on this face is to activate the rotate tool and hover over this face. And then you will need to tap the down arrow key on your keyboard. So now it will lock to that face regardless of where you point your mouse and you can rotate from this end point here to any angle. So similarly, if, for example, I want to lock to this face here, I will hover on the face first and then tap the down arrow key. And then I can rotate it along that face at an angle. So that's one way. Another way is by using the axis lines. So in this case, you will need to change the axis first and then rotate your object. So to change your axis, you can click here and you'll find the axis icon. So click on that. And now you need to specify the axis in SketchUp. So let's click on the origin point first and let's click on the red axis orientation and then finally on the green axis orientation. So now you can see the axis changes. And now if I select this object and tap Q to rotate, you can see that it snaps to the right axis in SketchUp and I can rotate it on that axis as well. And if you'd like to reset the axis, what you can do is you can Let's move this group away from the axis. You can right click on this axis point here. So I'm just right clicking on the center there and clicking on reset. So that would go back to the original axis location. So that's a quick tip for you guys in case you want to rotate from a different angle. Finally, like I mentioned before, if you select this object and tap the move key, which is M on your keyboard, you can see that we have these points here, which will also help you rotate in SketchUp directly and it'll also snap to those different axes in SketchUp as well. Now you can also rotate an array copy in SketchUp. So if I, for example, maybe this looks cool. So I'm going to select all of these and let's rotate it. Now what I would like to do is rotate it from a distance. So I'm going to just draw a reference line. Let's say we'll just draw a reference line from the origin. Let's snap it to the red axis and let's give it about 10 feet. All right, so I'm going to select all of these objects here, let's select it again. And let's use the rotate tool. So tap Q to activate the rotate tool. And this time let's snap from the this end point here. And I'm going to tap control on my keyboard to make a copy. So I'm going to make a copy by tapping control once, you just tap and release. And then I'm going to select the reference line. So this is going to be the reference line. So click again. So second click. And then you can place your object here, 180 degrees, and click again. So we placed our object, and now what we can do is, like how I showed you with the move tool, you can divide by a value and tap 10. So I'm going to divide by, say, 10, and tap Enter. So you can see we've created this cool-looking structure. You can do the same by rotating and copying to a certain distance, and then also multiplying it by 10. So let's do that quickly. So I'm going to rotate this. Let's copy from this end point. So activate the rotate tool, tap control or option on Mac, and then select this end point here. Copy it to maybe this angle, which is about 45 degrees. I've placed the object. And now before you tap escape or spacebar, I'm going to tap, uh, type in X 10 or X maybe five and tap enter. So you can see we've created a cool looking structure, very abstract in nature. All right, so in this video, you learned how to use the rotate tool and also a brief on the axis. That's pretty much how you use the axis. You will be able to change the axis inside groups as well. So you can change the axis inside groups. We'll talk about that later. In the next video, we'll talk about the scale tool and learn how to scale some of our models down. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. In this video, I'll show you how to use the scale tool in SketchUp. Let's go. All right, so to activate the scale tool, you can tap S on your keyboard. So you can see that the scale tool gets activated or you can click on the icon here from the main toolbar. Now with the scale tool active, if you orbit over any of the groups, you can see that it starts, it shows a bounding box. And if you click on these groups, it will show up with the grips, which means that the scale tool is active. Now with these groups, you can simply click and release on your mouse and you can drag them to scale them proportionally. And on the bottom right, you can also see that there is a scale value. 
So let's first scale arbitrarily. So I'm going to click once, which I've already done and click the second time to scale my object. I'm going to undo that. I can also scale things together. So if I select these three groups and tap S on my keyboard, by the way, that's how I prefer to use the scale tool. I always select objects first and then I tap S on my keyboard to activate the scale tool. So now I can click once and now you can see that it scales together. And let's give a scale this time. So maybe you want to reduce it to 50%. So you can type in 0.5 and tap enter. Now I've uh, written in comma 5, which doesn't work. So I knew you need to type in 0.5. So I'm going to type in 0.5 and tap enter. Now if you want to scale this back to the original size, then you can click on the corners there. And then you can tap in 2, which is mathematically correct and tap enter. So that that brings it back to its original size. Now another cool feature about scale is you can actually scale to a particular distance. So if I select this object here, let's measure this object first. So you can see it's about five feet. So let's scale this down on this side to about two and a half feet. So I'm going to activate the scale tool. At this time, I'm going to select this grip here because I want to scale it down only on one side. So I'm going to select this. So now you can see I've scaled it down to one side. But before clicking, I'm going to tap in the value, which is 2.5 apostrophe and enter. So you can see it's if I check the distance using the tape measure tool, it's two and a half feet. We'll talk about the tape measure tool in the next video, but that's just to give you an idea of using the scale tool. So that's another way you can use the scale tool. So instead of activating the scale tool first and then selecting your object, always select the object. So in this case, I will select this entire box and tap the scale tool, and then I can scale this object. In most cases, you will be using the scale tool to sort of snap to other points. Now, for example, if I want to move it or uh, stretch it to this point, I can select this mid grip here and then stretch it to this point. Now, another cool feature about the scale tool is let's say you want to make this base a bit smaller than the top base, a bit smaller than the bottom base. So you can select this face here and then tap the scale tool. And now if you drag this point, you can see that it sort of stretches down. And if you hold down the control key on Windows or option on Mac, you can see that it sort of scales down to the midpoint. You can also scale to 0.5 here and click again to create that object. So let me show it to you again. Let me just maybe explode this. I'm going to explode this group or we can enter the group as well. Select this face, tap the scale tool, select any of the corners there, tap control. You can just tap and release and then you can see that it scales, it tapers down. And if you sort of hover, it will actually snap to 0.5. So I'm going to snap it to 0.5 and let go. Finally, you can also select groups, like I mentioned before, and scale it to these edges here. This point here, it's a faster way to push pull in SketchUp, but it depends on the situation. And I'll show you when to use both the scale tool and the push pull tool when we do the real life projects. So I'm going to undo all of this. All right, here's another bonus tip for you guys. If you want to mirror in SketchUp, you can use the scale tool. So let's select this object, activate the scale tool by tapping S, click on any of the grip points. I'm going to mirror this to the other side. And now when you are on the other side, you will need to type in dash, which is minus and one. So minus one and tap enter. So you can notice that it scales it back or mirrors it from this side to the other side. Now the last modifier key in the scale tool is the shift key on your keyboard. So for example, if I'm scaling this and I'm going to use the mid grip points here or even the side grip points, you can see that it doesn't scale this object uniformly. So if you want to scale it uniformly using the mid grip points, you can tap the shift key on your keyboard. You just need to tap and release and it'll switch on the uniform scale mode. So even if you sort of scale it this way, it'll always scale uniformly. Also, if you select this object and tap S on your keyboard, you can also scale it at the utter distance uniformly. So right now you can notice we have our measurements on the bottom right. Now, right now, if you type in 10, it's actually scaling this by 10 times and not by the distance. So if you want to scale it by the distance, you need to click the midpoint and you need to type in 10 meters 
or 10 feet and tap enter. So I'll type in 10 meters and tap enter. And you can see right now, it's about 30 feet or 32 feet, which is 10 meters. So let's undo that. And if you want to scale uniformly, you can do so as well. So I'll tap S on my keyboard. I'll start scaling from the midpoint here. Tap shift to scale uniformly. And now I can tap in, let's say 30 feet and tap enter. So you can see the entire object scales uniformly to 30 feet. So be careful when you are scaling from the midpoint, you always need to give the units along with the measurements as well. All right, so that's how you use the scale tool, a very, very versatile tool. In the next video, I'll show you how to use the tape measure tool to draw reference lines, measure stuff, and also scale using the tape measure tool. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. In this video, I'll show you how to use the tape measure tool in SketchUp. Let's go. All right, so the tape measure tool will help you measure stuff in SketchUp. So to activate the tape measure tool, you can tap T on your keyboard. So that will activate the tape measure icon. And you can see you can activate it from the toolbar here as well. Now to measure stuff in SketchUp, you need to simply click on any of these points here or these edges. So I'm going to click on one of the edges, click and release. You do not have to click and hold down. And now if I sort of move to the top or hover on the top, you can see that it is about five feet. Sometimes when you move to the sides, it will move to the other axis as well. So now you can see it's about five feet. And if you want to snap it to a certain direction, you can do so as well. So if you tap the top arrow keys, I'm, by the way, just hovering. I have not clicked the second time. I've just hovered over the second edge to find out the distance. Now, what happens if you click on this edge, which is the second click? So if I click again, you can see that it creates these reference lines. So the tape measure tool will help you create reference lines in SketchUp. And it's very useful in the modeling process. So you can create reference lines from these edges. So these are infinite reference lines. You can see it goes on till infinity. Or you can also create reference lines which are not infinite. So if I want to create those, you would need to create them from the corners, from the vertexes. So if I click here and then make click a second time, or if you hover, it shows the distance. So if I click the second time, you can see that it creates a finite reference line. So if you click from the edges, it will create an infinite reference line. And if you click from the corners here, it will create a finite reference line. Now here are some bonus tips for you guys. Now we have some reference lines here in our SketchUp model. Now you will be using reference lines quite a lot in the modeling process and I'll show you how as well once we start on the projects. But if you wanna hide these reference lines, you can go to your display here and then we have guides here. So if you switch that off, you can see that all the reference lines get hidden. Now, if you want to delete the guides, you can do so as well in one go. So if you go to your display again and click on delete all guides, then it would delete all the reference lines. Now, here's another cool bonus tip with the tape measure tool. You can also use the tape measure tool to scale objects in SketchUp. You can scale the entire model or you can scale individual groups as well. So let's activate the tape measure tool. And if you tap control on your keyboard, you can toggle create guides. So by the way, it is option on Mac to use that modifier to switch to scale mode. So right now we're sort of in scale mode and now we can use this mode to scale the object. So if you do not scale inside a group, you will scale the entire model. So right now, if I click and orbit here, or hover here, you can see it's about five feet. So let's click the second time. And we are still active in the command. You can notice right now the length is five feet. Let's change this to 10 feet. Or you can also, also tap in 10 meters and tap enter. So when you tap enter, it will ask you whether you want to resize the model. Click on OK. And now you can see that the entire model changes. So you can scale universally the entire model. Or you can also scale individually. Like for example, each groups or components. So let's enter this group. And if you want to scale this back down, you can activate the tape measure tool, tap control to switch to scale mode, click once, click the second time, and let's tap in five feet and tap enter. So it'll ask you whether you want to resize the active group or component, click on okay. And you can notice only the active group 
scales back down to the size we gave it. So again, activate the tape measure tool, tap control or option on Mac, click once, click the second time, and then give in a value 10 feet and tap enter. So you can see it changes, or you can enter the group, tap T, tap control or option on Mac, click once, click the second time, and let's say five feet and tap enter. Enter again, and only the active group or component will change. All right, so I hope you found this video useful. In the next video, I'll show you how to use the Follow Me tool in SketchUp, which is a great tool to create skirtings, moldings, and a whole lot more. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'll show you how to use the Follow Me tool in SketchUp for web. Let's go. All right, so the first step you need to do is to create a path that you want to follow a profile around. So the Follow Me tool helps you to create profiles of various sizes. For, for example, moldings, skirtings, and a whole lot more. So first step, like I mentioned, is to create the path. So I'm going to use the line tool. So tap L to activate the line tool. I'm going to click from the origin once. And let's uh, snap it to the green axis. And let's move it to about, say, 7 feet. Tap enter. Then let's move it to the red axis. Let's say about 10 feet. Tap enter. All right, so I've created an l shape line. So this is going to be our path. Now we'll need to create the profile. Now when you create the profile, it's a good idea to always connect it with the line. So I'm going to select this endpoint here, which is also connected to the line there. And then I'm going to move the line tool to the top. So I'm going to snap it to the blue axis. So I'm going to give a profile, say about four inches. So I'm going to tap four inches, or you can also give 100 mm and tap enter. All right, and now let's move it to the right. So I'm going to move it to the red axis this time. So let's snap it to the red axis. So this would be about, say, two inches, so which is about 50 mm, and tap enter. Now let's go back down. You can hold down shift as well and click and click, and we've created our face. Now this will be the profile. We'll, of course, create more complex profiles later once we learn how to use the arc tool and more, but this is how the follow me tool works. So the first step is to select the path. So let's select this line, which is our path. Now we will need to activate the follow me tool. Now there is no shortcut. You can assign a shortcut later, but there is no shortcut for the follow me tools. So let's click on the three icons there and let's select follow me tool. So once you selected with the path selected, then you can click on the face. So if you click on the face, you can see that it creates that profile along that path. Now let me just undo this. You can also activate the follow me tool first and then drag the selection along that path. So let me show you how to do that as well. So you can see the follow me tool shows up in the main toolbar. So click on that and then select this face. Let's select the white face and then you can see that it sort of moves along the path. So that is also another way to create your skirtings. My preferred way is to always select the path first, activate the follow me tool, and then click on the face to automatically wrap around that object. Let me just undo this. What you can also do is add a profile on a face as well. So I'm going to create a rectangle here. So let's create a rectangle to this point here. So we've created our rectangle. Let's select this face, and then let's click on the follow me tool, and let's click our profile. So let's click on the profile and boom, you can see that it wraps around that face. All right, so here are some bonus tips for you guys when using the follow me tool. So right now we have created this profile around this face and you can notice we have some border holes here. So it didn't create that face at the bottom and also connected this face here, which is our path along with the profile. So we would ideally like to have the profile as a separate group from the path. So to achieve that, what you can do is draw the path and then let's draw the profile along the green axis. Let's also make this a group. So double click on that face, just the profile, right click and click on make group. Let's enter this group and let's also reverse this face. So you can right click on the face and click on reverse faces. And you can also create a different profile this time. So let's create maybe a profile like this and delete this face and also maybe something like this. You need to make sure you're drawing on the proper plane and not along another axis. 
and then we can delete this here as well. So we have sort of a profile. Now we can select this path, which is our face, click on the follow me tool. And now if you notice, we, we cannot select the profile. So in order to select the profile, you can right click on the group, click on edit group, and then click on the face here. So you can see it creates that entire geometry within a group as well. Now hide rest of the model is switched on. So let me switch that off. And let, let me tap escape on my keyboard. So now we can see the profile is separate and the path is separate as well. If I move this up, it's a complete separate geometry. And also, it's a solid group. So we do not have any issues with the group as well. So for example, if I make this a group and select this, it is not a solid group. So we cannot use Boolean functions on this group, but we can use it on this group here. So try to create your moldings and trims using this method where the profile is in another separate group. All right, now I'll show you some additional ways to use the follow me tool. Let's for example, create a circle here. So tab C to activate the circle tool, click once and click the second time to create your profile or path that is. So this is gonna be our path. Now let's create the profile. So if you want to snap to the midpoint, you just need to hover on these cardinal points or the edges here, and then you'll sort of get the center. So hover here and then come to the center. Then click on the center and draw a line which goes up. Then we can sort of draw a profile like this. Maybe give some detail here. Just some random details. And then delete that those lines here and delete this bottom line here. So it's not necessary for your profile to be connected to the path. So let's select the path, click on the follow me tool, and then let's click on the profile. So you can see that it creates sort of a top using the follow me tool. Now you can notice we have some jagged edges here and that's because the number of elements or the edges here are less. So if I select this, you can notice the number of segments is about 24. So let me undo. And let's increase the number of segments to say 48. And now we can select the path, click on the follow me tool, and click on the profile. So now you can see we have a more smoother curve. So always remember to select the path first. So if you make a mistake of selecting this as your path and click on the follow me tool, and then maybe click on this as your profile, you'll get some weird geometry like this. So always remember to select the path first, then click on the follow me tool and click on the profile. Now the follow me tool has a lot more functions and we'll explore this tool further once we start working on the projects. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how to use the arc tool in SketchUp. Let's go. All right, so to activate the arc tool, you can tap A on your keyboard or you can go here, the bottom of the main toolbars here. And you will notice that we have our two point arc, arc and our three point arc. There's also pi and some other tools that you can play around with, but let's start off with the two point arc. So let's select that. So it'll change the icon to the two point arc. And to create an arc, you need to click once. So let's click anywhere on the viewport. So that's the first click. Then you need to click the second time as well. So it's a two point arc, so which means it's going to infer from two points. So let's select the second point. So that's click and release on the second point. And then you can give a bulge, as you can see on the bottom right. So this is, you can give either a value or you can click the third time to create that arc. Now let's see, for example, what happens when we create this arc here in this corner. So for example, if I infer, now you can infer in SketchUp by simply hovering without clicking. And then if you sort of go to that point there, it will infer to that point. So get in the habit of inferring in SketchUp. So you can see I've just hovered on this end point. I'm slowly moving my mouse to the other point and I'm gonna click my first click with the two point arc selected. So that's my first click. And now if you see, if I sort of hover to this point here, it changes the color of the line to magenta, which means that it is again at the right tangent to edge. So you can click on the second point as well. And now you can sort of hover on this side and you can see that it sort of snaps to that magenta line. So you can click on the third time and you can see that we've created our arc. 
Also, after you created the arc, if you select this, and if you go to your entity info on the right, you will notice that it has number of segments. So if you have a larger arc, you can see uh, these lines are actually smaller segments. So you can see about this line has about 12 segments. So you can see the jagged edges. Now let's say you want a more smoother arc. You can do so by increasing the number of segments in your entity info. So let's change this to say 64 and tab, tap on tab, the tab key. And you can see now we have a more smoother arc. Now, I don't generally use the other arc tools in SketchUp, but in some cases you may have to use it. Most cases you will be using two point arc, but I will show you how to use the other arc features as well. So if you click on the basic arc, you can click once, click the second time, and then it will create an arc based on the origin of your point. So if I click here and click the third time, you can see that it's created that arc. I generally do not use this. And then there's another three point arc as well. So if you click once, click the second time, now you can sort of create the arc based on that second midpoint. So sometimes you may want an arc which is less curvy. So you, you may want only that edge there. And then you can sort of hover on the side like this and click on the third time to create this arc. So you can see we've created the arc. And then of course we can change the number of segments here as well. So 46, and then you can see now it's more smoother. Now let me show you another trick with the arc tool. So I'm gonna use the two point arc. So let's select two point arc here. And let's create that same arc here. So I'm just gonna click the second time and then finally click the third time. So I created the arc. And now let's say you wanna create the same arc on this edge as well. Now, instead of doing those three clicks, what you can do is if you double click here, it will automatically create the arc from the previous values. So you can double click here as well. So you can see how quickly you can create arcs in SketchUp. So that was a bonus tip for you guys. And finally, you can use the push pull tool. So I'm gonna tap the push pull tool or P on your keyboard, click on this face here, and let's move this down all the way till you see the edge. You can see that point there. So simply click again and then you can see that we've created a smooth surface. Then you can go ahead and also delete that face there. So you can simply drag and delete. So let's do the same here as well. I'm gonna double click this time. It will go all the way down using the push pull tool and then erase that. Now here are some bonus tips for you guys. Let's say for example, you wanna change the arc after you've applied it. Then you can select the arc here and then we have the radius here. So right now the radius is about two inches. Let's say we change this to four inches and tap tab. You can see the arc changes and you can also change it at the bottom. So let's say four inches and press tab. But if you select two arcs together, you will not be able to change the radius. You'll need to change them individually one by one. Apart from that, there is another feature. So if I activate the arc tool, click once, Click the second time. And before you click, you can notice we have some modifier keys. Now, I don't find them that useful because you can change it after you've created the arc as well. But you can tap, hold down control and tap the plus buttons. So you can see the number of sides increases this way. So if you hold down control and tap the minus, then the number of sides decreases. So it would be option for Mac or control on windows. Another bonus tip is when you create the arc, you can also increase the number of sides by typing in the number of sides while your arc tool is still active. So you can do so by typing in 32 S and then tap enter. So that would increase the number of sides. So now you can see on the bottom right, we have the sides option. Now if you move around, it goes back to bulge. So that's another way you can increase the number of sides while drawing arcs in SketchUp. Finally, let's talk a brief about the circle tool as well because very similar to the arc tool. So let's activate the circle tool by tapping C on your keyboard. So that's the circle tool. Click once and then similar to the arc tool, you can give a radius. So let's say you want a radius of 10 inches and then tap enter. Now similarly, if you select the circle and go to the entity info, you will not see any options because you selected the face, you need to select a line. So now if you select the, the line or the circle diameter line, you can notice the radius here. So you can change this, let's say 20. 
this tab so that increases the circle radius you can also see these jagged edges here so to make them more smooth you just increase the number of segments so let's say the 64 and press tab so now you can see the circle edges are more smooth as well of course when you create the circle you can increase the number of sides as well so let's say you want to make a polygon so you can type in 5s and tap enter so now you can see it becomes a polygon as well so that's how you work with the arc tools and the circle tool in SketchUp. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to create openings in SketchUp. Let's go. All right, so let's show you the basics of how to create openings. Let's create a simple rectangle and then create an opening in between. So we're going to use all the tools and shortcuts that we've learned so far for this video. I'm going to tuck myself in the corner and I'm going to show you how all these tools can come together to create openings in SketchUp. And eventually we are slowly getting there. We're going to start creating various projects with all the tools that we've learned in SketchUp for web. Let's go. All right, so the first step is, let's create an opening on a 2D plane. So let's create a rectangle. You don't have to worry about the dimensions, just create a rectangle there. And then select that face, use the offset tool, which is F on your keyboard, and let's create an offset inside. Now, if you want to create an opening, you simply need to select only the face and then click on delete. Let me undo that. Now, let's say, for example, if you select both the faces and the edges and click on delete, then it will not create the opening because it has deleted those lines as well. So make sure you only select the face and then click on delete or tap delete on your keyboard. That is. All right. So now we've created an opening. Now let's push this up. So you can see we've created an opening that is inside and we've pushed it up as well so we have a hole inside this form now let's say you want to create holes here on the sides as well so what you can do is let's create a slender rectangle do not make the rectangle this way so you can draw a rectangle but make sure you draw the rectangle which is slender so i'm going to draw a rectangle this way the reason why I did not draw a larger rectangle is because we have these boxes here. So it did not make that opening there. So now I've made a slender rectangle. Now let's create the opening. So there's multiple ways you can create openings. And the fastest way is using the push-pull tool. So let's activate the push-pull tool, which is P on your keyboard. Click once and release the mouse. And then you can hover over to the other side. And then click again to create that opening. So that's how simple it is to create openings. Let me show you what happens when I draw a larger rectangle and then try to create the opening. So I'm going to select the push-pull tool, click once, and then I'm going to push all the way to the back or I can also orbit to the back. And then if I click the end point, you can see it doesn't create the opening because it has these additional faces here on the side. So always be wary of where you're creating openings and make sure the sizes are correct. Now let's say for example, that you want to create the opening exactly at this edge, then let's use the tape measure tool and create some reference lines. So I'm going to select activate the tape measure tool by tapping T click on this edge here. And I'm going to snap it to the red axis, which is the right arrow key and I'm going to draw a reference line there. And then I'm also going to draw a reference line here. So now I know exactly where I need to create the opening. So let's create a rectangle right from this intersection. You can see if I hover, it creates that X mark. So you can select that point there and then the bottom point there. So we have, we've sort of split our faces and now let's use the push pull tool and click once. And if you click on the face inside, it should create the opening. So you can either click and click on the face inside to create the opening, or you can also click on the face orbit out to the other side and then click on that face to create that opening. Now you can also notice we have a line here. So now, for example, if I draw a rectangle here and try to create the opening, you can see that it sort of intersects with that face or that line. And that's why it doesn't create the opening because of that line there. So let me just undo and let me delete this line first. So let me just undo that rectangle there. Delete this line. You can use the eraser tool and just drag over that box, over that surface. You can see the line gets deleted. Now let's create a rectangle on top and use the push-pull tool. So activate the push-pull tool. 
can select any of the faces here. You do not have to select the face and then activate the push pull tool to create the opening because when you activate the push pull tool, it will give you an option to sort of select which face you want to push out. So I'm going to select this face. I'm not going to push it out. I'm going to push it in and I'm going to click anywhere on the outside face here. Now, if you sort of click inside or on the midpoint, it will not create the opening. So make sure you always select the back face correctly. So I'm going to click on that endpoint and boom, it creates that opening. So that is one way to create an opening. There's another way which you can create opening using solid tools. Now solid tools may be grayed out for you if you're using the free SketchUp for web version without a pro license. But if you do have a pro license, you can stick around and I'll show you how to use the solid tools. So I'm going to quickly make this a group. So I'm going to triple click on this, right click and click on make group. So we have one group here and then I'm going to create my opening group. So I'm just going to make, push this out and I'm going to copy this or let's make this a group first. And then I'm going to intersect it here between these two objects. All right. And now to use the Boolean tools in SketchUp, what you have to do is go to your bottom here. And then we have outer shell, intersect, union, subtract, trim, and split. We need to use subtract. So let's select subtract. And since our object is already selected, you simply need to select other object you need to subtract from and boom, it creates that open. So again, to reiterate, let me just undo. Select the object that you want to subtract the main object from. So this is our subtractable object. Let's call that, call it that. Click on the bottom here, select subtract, where subtract, click, select subtract here, and then click on that object. You can also select this object and search for subtract. So if you use the search feature here, you, you can search for subtract, select subtract and subtract the object from that group. Now here's a very important tip especially for beginners when you create openings. So I'm going to quickly create a rectangle and then create an extrusion using the push pull tool. And then I'm going to make this object a group by triple clicking on it. Right click and click on make group. But what most beginners do is they try to create the opening outside the group. So we are outside the group hierarchy. And this is what most beginners do. They try to create an opening by making a rectangle outside the group. And once they push it over, you can notice it doesn't create an opening, but a new extrusion. So always be wary of where you are creating the opening. So you in for groups, you will always need to enter the group first and then create the rectangle inside and create the opening. It may also be the case that once you enter the group, you may have another group here. So I'm just going to push this out, triple click on this and make this a group. So we have another groups, which mean, which means if I go to my outliner, we have a nested group. So you cannot create an opening on top of this group, unless you enter the group, make a rectangle on top of the face, and you create an opening this way. So how do I know I'm in the active group? It's these dash lines here. So these dash lines, if they're darker, it means you are active in a group. So this is a quick, very important tip, especially if you're a beginner when it comes to creating an opening in SketchUp. So that's how you create openings. We'll be creating multiple openings in our projects. And in the next video, let's bring in all the tools together and create our first Tetris project. I'm going to model out all the Tetris models and then we'll sort of combine them, rotate them and have fun with SketchUp. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Welcome, welcome. So in this video, we'll create the Tetris model, all the five components, and I'll show you guys step by step. Let's go. All right, so now before I start, I would highly recommend that you watch this video till the end because I'm gonna explain in detail on how you can apply materials on faces, groups and components and how it differs from each other. So let's go to our create new button and let's select the right template here under the create new button. So let's select architectural feet and inches. You can also go with the metric system if you're more familiar with that. So let's select architectural feet and inches. So now I'm going to create the various Tetris blocks. It's, they are also called as Tetrominos. So let me create the base first using the rectangle tool. We can give about one foot or 30 centimeters. So one foot comma one foot and tap enter. Now I can push this up by one foot as well. So activate the push pull tool and let's push this up by one foot. Perfect. Now I'm going to select all of these faces and edges. So triple click to select the faces and edges, right click and then click on make group. Perfect. So we've created our simple cube. 
We can delete type for now because we understand the scale. So now let's create the various Tetris blocks using this as a typical group. So activate the move tool and tap control twice or option twice on Mac. So this will activate the stamp mode on SketchUp. And now you can go ahead and start creating the various Tetris blocks. So we have the I block and then we have, for example, the T block. We have the O block as well. We also have something called the Z block. So that's four and yeah, we have the J block. So that's one, two, three, and this is our J block. Perfect, so that's how simple it is to create these Tetris blocks super fast in SketchUp. All right, so we've created all our Tetris blocks and now let's explore how materials work on groups, components, and faces. We're gonna use this T block here for demonstration. So we have four groups here. Now these are not nested and they are simply just a main group. So how do I check that? Just go to the outliner here. So you can see all the various groups here. Let's select all of these four groups, right click and click on make group. So now you can see we have our main group here and then we have four nested groups. How do you enter a group? You double click on that group and now you can see we have these four nested groups. So you can have different hierarchies in SketchUp and you need to understand how material hierarchy works while applying materials in SketchUp. Now here's how material hierarchy works. Now when you enter the group, you enter the nested groups and when you enter each nested group, you have access to the faces. Now these faces are all assigned with the default material. So if you want to check whether it's assigned with the default material, just go to your entity info here and you can notice we have our front face and our back face. So the front faces are all assigned to the default material and so are the back faces. It's always important that the front face is always facing you while you apply a material. Now I'm inside the group and I'm inside the nested group as well. Let's assign a material on this face here. So I'm gonna activate the bucket tool and I'm gonna apply this red material on the front face there. Now let me tap escape once. So right now I'm at the nested group level. So I have access to all of these groups here. Now watch what happens when I apply material on this nested group here. So I'm going to click on this group with this yellow material. So when you apply a material on that nested group, it will only change the faces that have the default material. In this case, we did not have the default material on this top face here, but only the ones on the bottom and the sides. So that is the reason why only the sides and the bottom change. Now watch what happens when I exit this group and I apply the material at the parent group level. Now at this level, all these faces here change because all of them had the default material. So this is how material hierarchy works, where your material at the face level, which is inside the nested group and at the face, you can see that I've selected this face, will always have priority or precedence over the nested groups or the parent groups. And if I exit once, if I have a nested group and if I have a material applied on the nested group, then this would have priority or precedence over the main group or the parent group. So when you apply materials on groups or components in SketchUp, you need to understand that you're applying it on the containers or the wrapper. You need to consider the groups as a wrapper. So when you apply a material, you're not applying it on the faces inside, but rather on the wrapper. And material hierarchy works in a way that the nested groups have priority over the parent groups. And if you've applied a material inside at the lowest level on the face, then this would have priority over the nested groups or the parent groups. So this is very useful. Say for example, you have a furniture and you would like to only change the legs of that furniture. Or in this case, I would like to only change these three blocks here. Then it's a good idea to have your table with a different material, uh, or in this case, the podium here with a different material, and all the rest can have the default material. So if I change it at the, if I change the color at the main group level, say for example, this green color, and I apply it on the main group, only the bottom three cubes will change because they only had the default material. Now what if you want the entire group to have the same material as this? then you will need to change all these materials to the default material. So if I select this podium and change it from here, so you can see the materials and 
change it at the entity info. So let's select entity info, click on materials and assign the default material. It will take that green color of the parent group or the parent container. And if you want to change the color of this, then enter the group, select this red color and assign our default material. So now we are changing this at the parent group level. So you can assign any color as shown. So as a practical example, let me just quickly create a table. All right. So we have a simple table here. And let's say when you copy this table, you only want to change the color of the table top and not the legs. In that case, you can assign a material to these four legs here as shown and leave the table top with the default material. Now let's group all of these, right click, click on make group. And now when I copy this over and if I want to change the color, if I select any material and apply it, it will only affect the table top because the legs had another color. But if you have, say for example, these as a default material, so let's go to entity info and change this to default then it would take the color of the main group. So I hope this concept has been grilled in and you know how material hierarchy works in SketchUp. And another important tip you need to keep in mind is always apply materials on your front faces. So for example, I'm just going to explode these, right click, click on explode, and I'm going to randomly reverse some of these faces. Now, if you want to avoid errors in your render engines, then it's a good idea to always have your front faces or the normals facing the camera. So how do you fix this where, for example, you apply a material on a reverse face and you do not know whether this is the reverse face or the front face. In that case, you can just go to your scene settings here, click on edit, go to your face settings and click on monochrome. So now you know which are the reverse faces. And if you want to fix all the reverse faces together, what you can do is select the face, right click and click on reverse face and then right click on the same face and click on orient faces. So that would fix all the reverse faces in SketchUp. So once you're done, just go back and click on shaded texture and click on done. So we fixed our faces, but the material is still applied on the reverse face. So if you want to make sure the reverse face is using the default material, just select those faces that you applied the reverse face on and change the back face to the default material. So that should fix that. All right. So in the Tetris block, in this example, I would recommend that you make all of these nested blocks or nested groups, a main group, and then simply apply the color on the main group container or the wrapper. So I'm going to apply right here for the Z block. And let's make all of this uh, group as well and apply material on that group there. Now I exploded this, which means I will need to create this again. So I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna copy this group here and then use the stamp mode to place multiple groups. And they're all using the default material, which means if I make this a group, right click and click on make group. And then for example, apply a green material, it will apply on the entire container or wrapper. Finally, we need to fix this. I would ideally like to apply a material on the main group. So right click, click on main group. So how do you fix this? Enter the group and change all of these at their respective levels. So this is a nested group, which is using tie gray. Let's assign the default material. Let's assign the default material here, at the nested level. And let's enter this nested group and apply the default material on our face there. Perfect. So now if you apply a material at the top level or at the parent level, so you should always be wary of which level you're applying. So if you see this bounding box, I'm inside the group. So let's exit and then let's apply, apply this at the main group level. So I hope this concept is grilled in and you understood how to apply materials in SketchUp and the front faces and back faces as well and how hierarchy, material hierarchy plays a very important role. If this is grounded in, then it makes life much more easier and you'll also understand how to apply materials in SketchUp. All right, so now let's place our blocks on top of each other. So I'm going to select my T block here 
and then place it on top of my block and probably place this block here let's move our j block place it here and maybe even rotate it along the red axis and let's move our z block here and rotate it along the green axis so always make sure to snap it to the right plane and then you can go ahead and rotate it perfect and then of course you can make all of this a main block as well but please note now if you try to change the material of this container it will not change although if you notice on the default it does change to tie red but if you want the material of the blocks inside to take the material of your container then you would need to select these nested blocks and assign the default material so i hope you found this video useful and i'll see you guys next video cheers hey guys welcome back so in this video i'll show you how to model this tv unit right from scratch using the tools that we've learned so far in the course let's go all right so the first step is to analyze the model i will of course share a pdf of this model as well so that you understand the dimensions better so you can see right now it's a five feet wide tv unit and it is one and a half feet so five feet for those who are using metric is about 1.5 meters and one and a half feet is about 450 mm or yeah 45 centimeters and the height is two feet or 60 centimeters or 600 mm and also we have the leg height which is about four inches or 100 mm so that's the basics and now uh, we're going to build this with plywood so plywood in general is about 19 mm thick or three quarter of an inch so that's three fourth inch and we'll be building this model step by step. So let's create a new model. I'm just gonna to go to save, purge all. So let's create a new file. So let's go to home, create new, and click on architectural feet and inches. You can use metric as well as I explained both in metric and feet and inches. So I'm gonna stick with architectural feet and inches. All right, so the first step is to create the base. So that is five feet by one and a half feet, which is a depth. So tap R on your keyboard to activate the rectangle tool. Click once. And now we need to give the dimensions. So I'm going to type in five, apostrophe, comma, and one and a half feet. So that's one foot six inches. Or you can type 1.5, apostrophe, and enter. If you're using metric, you would be typing 1.5 M, comma, 0.45 m and then tap enter so that's the size of our bottom and top plywood we are also going to give a thickness to this so activate the push pull tools tap p to activate the push pull tool click once and then you can give the thickness which is 19 mm you can type in 19 mm even if you're using architectural feet in inches so for example if i type 19 mm here and tap enter you can see that it gives the right thickness. So this is 3 fourth of an inch. You can also, of course, type 3 fourth of an inch. So 3 slash 4, double apostrophe, and tap enter. So we have the right thickness as well. Now what you need to do is a very important step is to make this a group. So select all of this, right click, and click on make group. So we made our base. Now let's create the sides as well. So now I'm going to activate the rectangle tool again. Now instead of creating it on the same Y plane, I will create it on a vertical plane. So we're going to snap it to the green axis. So tap the left arrow key before, or tap the right arrow key that is in this case. And before you click, and now I'm going to click on the corner here. So I'm going to click on this endpoint. All right, great. And now you can see the dimensions. So I'm just going to hover it on top just to understand which dimension belongs where. So you can see the larger dimension is about two feet. So that's the height and the depth is one and a half feet. So the first value is your depth and the second value is your height. So you can simply drag this uh, rectangle just to understand which value belongs to which side. All right, perfect. So now I'm going to type in 1.5 apostrophe comma. 2 feet which is 60 centimeters so 2.2.0 feet and tap enter 
boom so we made the size as well and i'm going to give a thickness for this so i'm going to give three fourth of an inch you can of also of course double click on the face and it will read the previous value all right let me check the thickness perfect and finally select all of this right click and click on make group so we have the sides as well now let's move this in place so i'm going to use the move tool select it first tap m to activate the move tool tap control to make a copy click on the bottom corner here and then move it to this corner here you can also snap it to the red axis by tapping the right arrow key so i'm going to snap it there all right perfect now i'm going to move this up so i'm going to tap m on my keyboard tap control to make a copy click on this point here and copy it up so we have the top and bottom and also the sides now let's create the back face so so to create the back face i will not create it from scratch i will rotate and copy this bottom shelf so activate the rotate tool which is q on your keyboard tap the right arrow key which goes to your protractor mode here then click on the bottom there and tap control to make a copy which is any very important you can see the icon changes click once which is the reference line you can of course add the angle or you can see right now it snaps to 90 so i'm going to click again to add the back face now i'm just going to move this face in so you can move it from this corner to this corner here all right perfect and now what you need to do is you can either enter the group and push this up this way or what you can do is you can select this group tap s to use the scale tool and then use this middle grip button to scale it to this edge all right perfect i'm going to remove type for now i understand that the scale is correct so i'm going to remove type now what i'll do is i'll actually go ahead and save the model because i have done some amount of modeling and and i don't and i do not want to lose it so let's click on untitle here click on new model give a name and then click on save all right perfect so now let's copy these side boards we understand that all of them are the same thickness so let's move one to the center here and partition this shelf or this tv unit so i'm going to select this element here select it from the corner tap control to make a copy and then i'm just going to move it to the midpoint there actually what i would like to do is actually move from this midpoint here to the midpoint of this shelf so, that, so it's sitting right bang in the middle but you can notice that it sort of intersects with the other plywoods so what i will do again is activate the scale tool so tap s to activate the scale tool click on the top there and drag that to the bottom there and here you just need to click and release and then click again to make that change all right so and i'll move this in here as well perfect now what i'll do is i'll create the front shutters so again i can use one of these plywood so i'm just going to move this in front so select that and move it in front you can of course snap it so let's snap it to the green axis using the left arrow key and then place it here once you placed it you need to scale it down so tap s to activate the scale tool and make sure you select the right one so you can see right now it's hovering over the three of these you need to select the midpoint so let's select the midpoint there and then place it there now what i will do is i will use some reference lines to make my modeling faster and better so i'm just going to draw a reference line here to the midpoint here so let's see if we can select the midpoint yeah we got the midpoint and then i'm going to select this shutter here so this is called a shutter and i'm going to scale this down further as well to the intersection of that reference line so to draw a reference line you need to use the tape measure tool so now i'll select this element tap m tap control and then move it to this corner here all right perfect so we made our two shutters as well now let's create the legs so first what i would do is delete this guide so you can select that and tap delete now we need to create some guides at the bottom of this cabinet so what i will do is i will draw a guide from here so this would be about 2 inches so tap two double of post free and enter so activate the tape measure tool which is t on your keyboard click once on the edge and then give your distance 4 inches perfect perfect so from here as well which is 4 inches 
and from the back which is about 2 inches. So our legs are going to sit on this side here. So we're going to draw a rectangle. It's going to be a tapered leg and we're going to give a dimension of say one and a half inches by one and a half inches. So 1.5 inches comma 1.5 inches. Okay, let me just type that in correctly. So 1.5 inches. So sometimes when you try to add the dimensions, it may not read it properly. So in that case, you will need to snap your rectangle first and then add the dimensions. So I'm going to tap the top arrow key. And now let me add the dimensions. So 1.5 inches, comma, 1.5 inches, and then tap enter. So that's the top part of the leg. Now we need to push it down by four inches. So one and a half inch is about 40 mm. So 40 mm by 40 mm on top. And then let's push this down. So I'm going to push this down by four inches or 100 mm. So four inches and tap enter. And then we need to scale this down by half. So to, to do that, you'll need to select the bottom face. So do a drag selection from top left to bottom right. Tap S to activate the scale tool. And then you need to click on one of these grip points. So you're scaling only from one corner. So to scale from all corners, you can tap Control on your keyboard or Alt on Mac. And then it should snap to the mid, which is scale 0.5. So once it snaps, just click again. And this should be about half of one and a half inch, which is three fourths of an inch, which is perfect. All right, perfect. This looks nice. So now let's select this, right click. And this time I'm going to make it a component because if we edit one, then it would instantly have changes on similar instances of that same component. So let's make component and call this leg typical and click on OK. Now let's copy this to this side. Select both of these, use the move tool and copy it to this corner there. All right, perfect. So we're done creating our TV cabinet. One last thing what I would like to do is add a glass shutter partition in between. So I'm going to draw a reference line again to the midpoint here. And then I'm going to activate the rectangle tool. And then I'm going to click on that intersection there and tap the top arrow key. So now you can draw even in space using the top, top arrow key. So I'm snapping it right to the right plane. So let's click here, which is the other end point, and we've created our rectangle. Now this will have a thickness of one fourth of an inch, or about six mm. So you can give that value as well. So one, four, and enter. So that's how thick glass shutter thicknesses are. Now let's select all of this, right click and click on make group. And we have a glass shutter. Perfect. So now what I'll do is I'll delete all the guides first and then apply all the materials. So let's go to our display here and let's click on delete all guides. So all the guides get deleted. And now let's go to our materials. And let's select glass for the glass partition. So let's go to glass and mirrors. You can select any of the glass materials here and apply it on your shutter. Now if it doesn't apply, it's because it's, we've not made it a group, so undo, select all the elements, and we've only made the top face a group. So sometimes things like that happen if you don't select correctly. So let's explode this first. So right click and click on explode, and then triple click to make sure you select all the connected face and, uh, faces and edges. Right click, click on make group, then select the glass material. Now with the bucket tool be active, and then click to apply that material. Now let's apply a wood material for our cabinets. So let's go to wood here and let's select maybe this wood material here and then simply apply it on your cabinet. All right, so this is one material. Let's select another material maybe. So let's go with this. All right, I like this better. So let's apply it on all the shutters. So I'm gonna click all around to apply the material. I'm also going to apply the material on the legs. So simply go ahead and click away. Or what I would highly suggest when you apply materials on components is when you enter the component, it's a good idea to enter the component and then apply the material. So it applies on all the similar instances. 
So let's apply it inside the component group. So now if I apply on one, you can see that it affects the others as well. Now tap escape and boom, you're done. Finally, what you need to do is select all of these elements, right click and click on make group. And you can also move it to the origin here so that it sits on the right plane. All right, great. So you just created your first furniture in SketchUp. You can see how simple SketchUp it is to create furniture. In the next video, we will sort of document this furniture in SketchUp using scenes and also add some dimensions and more. So we're going to learn more features in SketchUp and then a few in the coming videos. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'll show you how to create scenes and we'll also export some images of our TV unit. All right, so to activate scenes, you can go to your default tray here. And we have scenes here right at the bottom. It's like a video icon. So click on that and this window should show up. I'm just going to close the entity info. All right, so scenes works as your camera views in SketchUp. So you can set up different camera views using scenes. And it will also help you document your project better as well. So the basic camera view is, of course, your perspective view. So to create a scene, you just simply need to orbit with your mouse and find the right view. So you can also hold down shift and the orbit button to sort of find the right view. And then you can go to the plus button here, click on that. And you can see that our first scene has been created. You can also, of course, rename the scene. So if you click on edit here, then you can rename this. So I'm going to call this ISO view one. Scenes can also save, for example, different styles, shadow settings, access locations, visible tags, and a whole lot more. So we'll learn how to create tags, and then we'll come back to scenes, and I'll show you how you can create different options as well. For now, let's click on OK, and we've created our first scene. Let's create another view as well. So I'm just going to operate to this side here, and then I'm going to click on the plus button, and we created another scene. So I'm going to rename this scene as well. So click on edit. ISO view dash two and click on OK. So now if you switch between these scenes, you can see that it slowly moves to the other side. So if you set up scenes, you can also create animations in SketchUp, which I will create a, another video on. All right, so I've created two views, but I would actually like to document this TV unit and measure it out and create elevations and plans as well. You can do that using scenes too, but you need to first set up the right cameras. So let's go to camera here. So you can see that we have different camera methods. So we have perspective, parallel projection, and two point perspective. Perspective means that we have a vanishing point. So these lines here end to a vanishing point in space. You generally learn about two point perspective and perspective perspective in art school or architectural school and interior design school as well. It's a very interesting topic. And if you're interested, you can go ahead and read more about it. And now if, if you switch to parallel projection, this means that all the lines here are parallel to each other. So it doesn't end to a vanishing point. They always remain parallel. And this is also known as the ortho view. So you can see we have a parallel projection view and we also have two point perspective which means we have two vanishing points. So you can see we have two vanishing points and they're sort of distorted as well. So if I click on two point perspective again, it depends on the angle from where you're viewing the model. So if you're viewing it from here, this looks better. So let's click on two point perspective. And then you can see that we have a right view. We can also change the field of view here. So this will sort of distort the model. We'll talk more about the field of view later especially when we do the V-Ray rendering for our models. For now, let's leave it at the default, which in general is about 35. Now, 35 is also used in your DSLR cameras. So if you know about DSLR photography, then the field of view should work similar to the focal length or field of view in the DSLR cameras. Now, before we switch to parallel projection and create the different elevations and plans. What you can also do is you can update a view. Now, for example, we have ISO view one and ISO view two. Let's say, for example, you do not like ISO view two, maybe you want a more zoomed out version. First step, what you need to do is in SketchUp for web, 
you need to click on this point here and click on update. So this dialog box opens and then you can set up your view however you like. So I'm going to sort of have a zoomed out view and then click on OK. So now you can see the view has been updated. So let's go to ISO view one and this is ISO view two. So that's how you update in SketchUp for web free. But in SketchUp Pro, it's very different. You have your scenes right on top here and you can simply right click and click on update. All right, so now let's create our elevation. So let's go to palette projection. Then we have our standard views. So if you open standard views, we, you can see we have our plan view. We have a south elevation, east elevation, north, west, bottom and ISO. So if this is in perspective, then the view doesn't come as a proper elevation. So make sure you're always using palette projection to get the right plan view and the right elevations. So I'm going to switch to palette projection. Now what I'll also do is I'll select this group, right click and click on zoom selection. So sort of zooms in to the model. And then what you can do is you can simply zoom out. So I'm just scrolling out a bit and I like this view. So let's save this out. So I'm going to click on the plus button and I'm going to rename this as well. Similarly, you can also create the side elevations. So click on South elevation, click on the plus button and rename this as well. So I'm going to quickly create elevations for my views. All right, so I've created a bunch of elevations. As you can see, you have the front view, the side view, the back view as well. And we also have some ISO views. Now I do not want such a zoomed out view. So I'm just going to sort of zoom in and I'm also going to switch on two point perspective. Let's get the angle first. So two point perspective generally works better if you're at the right eye height, which is your eyes, your eye height to the model. So I think this should be fine. And then let's click on two point perspective and then you need to update. So this is something which is a little annoying in SketchUp for web because in SketchUp Pro, you can generally just zoom in and then update the view. So I'm just going to click, make sure this window box is open, then select two point perspective and then click on OK. So that should update the view as well. We also have some ISO views. So this would be good in case you want to create some ISO views of your model. So let's create some ISO views as well and then click on the add scene button. Okay, so this is not an ISO view. This is sort of a perspective view. So let's maybe change this to just view one. All right, perfect. So we've created different views. Now you can also export these views. So if you go to the top left here, go to download, you can download it as a PNG. So let's click on PNG. So now you can see, you can also pick a view. So these are not scenes. These are actually views from your model. Or you can also pick a scene. So view one, view two, front view, side view. So let's go with maybe ISO view. You can also switch on transparent background, which means the background gets hidden. And then let's click on export as PNG. So you can see we've just exported our first model. And if you want to hide your axis in SketchUp, what you can do is you need to update the style of these views. So let's go to styles, then select the right style, click on edit, go to your modeling settings. And if you scroll down, you can see we have model axis. So you switch this off, you can see that the axis goes away, click on done. And now if you go to the views here, you can see that none of the axis lines show up. So let's export this again. So file, export, file, download, and click on PNG. Make sure transparent background is on. Click on export as a PNG. Click on export. And boom, you can see that we've downloaded our PNG. And there's no axis lines and looks perfect. In the next video, we'll create some dimensions as well for our scenes. So I'll show you how to use the dimension tool in SketchUp. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. In this video, I'll show you how to add dimensions and text in SketchUp. Let's go. To create a dimension, it's very simple. You just need to go to your bottom here.
open that icon there and then click on dimensions so you will find dimensions here so click on that icon so dimensions works with three clicks so if you click once that is the first endpoint that you want to reference so that's one this is the second reference point and then you can drag out a line either on the blue axis or on the red axis and then click the third time to create your dimensions and it's always click and release now to change the text you can select this dimension and change the text size here so automatically when you select the dimensions the entity info opens in your default tray and let's change this to maybe 18 you can also change the font if you like i'm going to leave it with open sans it's a good font you can also align the text to the dimension line now if you want the dimension to always face you then you can click on this icon here which is align text to the screen and you can also move the text to the corners as well sketchup for web also has different endpoints in general we use the architectural dash symbol finally we can also change the color so you can change this to whatever color is present in your model now there are more options in sketchup pro but these basics should work for you in sketchup for web now ideally it's a good idea to assign these dimensions when you're in a particular view so let's go to a scene that we can dimension so let's go to scenes here my scenes and let's select maybe front view we can delete this dimension for now now let's create a dimension again so let's click on the dimension icon click once click the second time and then click the third time to create your dimension now let's say for example you want to add a text to the dimension you can do so as well so you need to double click on the dimension and let's call this width and then you need to give the bracket symbols so open and close bracket and click outside so you can see it shows up with the text another important note is that if you sort of edit maybe some of the elements here or let's say let's move it out in the red axis you will notice that the dimension also updates in real time so it's because it is associated to the model geometry let me just undo that and let's go back to front view so you can go ahead and dimension out this view so i'm just going to quickly do that now i'd like to make this text on the left so you can do that as well let's go to our entity info and just push this out now let's say for example you want to reduce the scale of these dimensions you can do so in your model info settings so let's go to model info here so right now you can see the precision is set to 1 16th of an inch. So let's change this to maybe half. And then you can see that the dimensions change accordingly. Now if, let's increase the size of all of these texts. So let's select all of them. And let's change it from here. So let's maybe keep it at 14. 14 works well. Now the problem is that when you create dimensions in SketchUp, and if you orbit around, you can see that it sticks around. So it's a good idea to create tags in your SketchUp model and organize your model better. By the way, we generally do dimensioning in layout for SketchUp for a more detailed dimension of your model and for documentation as well, which I will show you later. But this is a quick way to create dimensions and give you, a, give you or your client an idea of what you are building. Now the text tool also works similarly to dimensions. So I'll show it to you quickly in this video as well. So to access the text tool, just click on the bottom there and then you will find the text tool right next to dimensions. So you can find the text tool here. So click on that. Then you, you can hover on the edge or on any face that you would like to, you would like to annotate. So let's maybe annotate this object here. Click once, click the second time. And you'll notice that it shows up the width. So let's maybe change this to top ply three quarter of an inch and this also works similarly to dimensions so if you select this uh, you can see that it has some settings here so you can change the size of this dimension you can also change the end point whether you want it as an arrow or as a dot i like this arrow here 
and you can also of course change the material again these texts show up in 3d so it's a good idea to stay organized with your model and hide all of this when you are orbiting around in sketchup so in the next video we'll learn how to use tags and organize our model better so I'll see you guys next video cheers hey guys welcome back so in this video we'll learn how to use tags in sketchup all right so in the previous video we dimensioned out our model and the problem is that if you go to any scene these dimensions remain so what you could do is you, you could assign these texts and dimensions to particular layers or in SketchUp, it's known as tags. So let's go to our tags window here in the default tray. I'm going to close down the other ones. And let's start creating some tags. So to create a tag, you can click on the plus button here. And I'm going to call this text. Then let's create a tag called dimensions. And now we can also create some tags for our elements here. So I'm going to create a tag called legs. So this would go to our models. It's a good idea to give a prefix to help stay organized with your tags. So I'm going to call this M dash legs. So M stands for model. I have a very good system that I follow for tagging elements, especially on larger product projects. And I'll show it to you later on in the main course. So for now, let's just use a system that makes sense. So M dash legs m dash sides for the side plies m dash shutters so glass partitions okay perfect now to assign tags there's two ways so what you could do is since we've already created created the tags you can select the tags here or the text here and you can change it by going to your entity info and you can see we have current tags so click on that and let's change this to text so that's one way to change tags the other way is by using the tag tool so if you select any of these tags here in the tags window if you hover outside you can see that it switches to the tag tool so I'm going to assign this to dimensions so you simply click on these elements and it will be assigned on the right layers so now if you switch off or use this eye tool here so this is called view so if you switch this off, you can see that you can hide the tags. All right, so once I have done tagging, I'm gonna hide it. Now let's tag some of these elements here. Now let's select glass partition and assign the tag. Now, the problem is that this is one single group. So if I hide the glass partition, you can see that the entire group gets hidden. So what you could do is, let me just undo that. So I think now it is not assigned. Yeah. So what you could do is you could enter the group first, then select the tags and you should be able to assign it now. So I've assigned it to the glass partition. Let's hide that. Now let's assign the legs. So one, two, three, four. Let's hide that as well. Now let, let's assign the shutters as well. So these are the two shutters. So let's select shutters and assign it there. And then instead of tagging each element individually what you can do is just select all of it and then simply change it in the tag folder so i'm going to change this to sides and hide that as well so that's a quick way to hide stuff in sketchup by tagging the elements so now if i go to my scenes let's go to our scenes here and let's go to maybe view one what you could do is you need to first click on here and click on maybe update so this window shows up and then what you can do is just go to your tags so let's go to tags here and switch off dimensions and text then what you can do is just click on ok so now if I go to view 2 and then back to view 1 you can see that the dimensions and text gets hidden now SketchUp Pro has a better feature to update scenes. You simply need to right click and update. But for some reason, they've omitted that in SketchUp for web. All right, you can also group tags. Now, for example, this is part of the model. So I'm going to select all of this. Now to select all of this, you need to simply click once, hold down shift on your keyboard and click the second time to select all of this. And then click on create folder. So I'm going to call this model tags. 
So now if I hide the entire group, you can see that the entire group gets hidden. Now you can select these two elements here as well. So dimensions and text. So hold down control or option on Mac and then group these together. And let's call this annotations. So you can hide that by simply hiding the group. So you can go down individually to each view and hide the annotations if you like. Always make sure to update. So now after clicking on update, let's hide that and then tap OK or click on OK. So once you've created a lot of tags, you can also sort tags in alphabetical order. You also have color by tag option. If you switch this on, you will notice which tags are assigned. Now, if some tags are not assigned, say for example, if I make a rectangle here and push this up, you can see that it is not assigned. Even if I make it a group, it's not assigned. Let's go to model tags. Maybe I'm going to assign shutters here. Assign that. So if you go to colors, you can see that the tag has been assigned. So let me delete this. And finally, once you've done assigning all of it, and if there are some additional tags which are not used, and if you click on purge, then those would get deleted. All right, so that was a quick brief overview on tags. We'll be using tags quite a lot in our projects to make our models more organized. It helps also in the documentation process when you send these models to layout for SketchUp to create more detailed documents of your model. All right, guys, welcome to the first assignment. So you just completed modeling a Tetris model and also a furniture unit. Feel free to share your models in the assignment sections and I'll be ha happy to check it out as well. And feel free to ask questions in the Q&A as well if you have any questions. Now, as a bonus tip, since you watched this video, I'll show you how to import that Tetris model into this model. So just go to your top left here, click on import and click on Trimble Connect. Click on new model and let's select this Tetris model. So I'm going to import it as a component. So just select that and click on import as component. So you can see we have bought in this model. It also brings in the materials. So let's enter this model. Let's delete die for now. So we have this large Tetris model. Let's move it on top of our TV unit. And then I will scale this down. So I'm just going to activate the S tool, which is scale. And then I'm just going to scale it down. So we have a simple decor as well. Decor or decor, whatever you want to call it, on top of a TV unit. All right. I hope you are excited as I am for the next few sections and projects that you learn in this course. I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. All right. Congrats on finishing your first project. Now, I would highly recommend that you join our Discord server and you can share your work under showcase your work here. So we have other projects from other students, as you can see. So feel free to share your work and I'll be happy to share feedback and more as well. Hey guys, welcome. So in this video, I'll show you how to share this model as a link so that you can share it to your clients and more and they can explore this model in detail as well. And if you'd like me to check it out, feel free to share the link of your model to our Discord server and I'll be happy to check it out and give comments as well. All right, so to share your model, go to the top left here click on share and then you'll get an option to switch on this toggle button here. So let's switch that on and that will generate a link. So click on copy. So you can see anyone with this link will be able to view this model and any saved updates. So if you make any updates, they will see it in real time. So let's copy this and let's go to a new tab, a incognito tab, paste it here and tap enter. All right, so now you can see that I can see my model. I can, of course, not make any changes, but I can sort of move around the model and see how it is built. And also it has, it comes with some features. So on the right, you can see our default tray here. You can click on this toggle to open it up. So we have our scenes set up here right on top. And then we also have animation. So if you set up the scenes correctly, and if you click on play animation, you can see that it runs through the various scenes in your model. Now, if you like to slow down the scene, you can do so as well. So if you go to settings here, you can see the transition time. So if I increase this to maybe say 11 seconds, so you can see that it slowly transitions. How cool is that? Delay time is the delay between each of the scenes. 
so it will sort of pause here take 6 seconds and then switch to the next scene so click on okay and you can also quickly go to different scenes so you need to pause the animation first and you can sort of switch on parallel projection two point perspective or you can also go to plan view south elevation east elevation north and if you go to my scenes you can also switch between the various scenes now the transition time uh, was increased so that's why it's taking so long so let's sort of reduce that to 2 seconds so now it would be faster so let's close this then we also have orbit so if you switch that on if you left click on your mouse you can orbit around we have pan we also have zoom so left click to zoom in and zoom out and then we have zoom extends we also have shadows so if you switch on shadows here you can see that you can see the shadows of the model so if you change the shadow settings in sketchup then it would update here i'll create another video on using shadows once we dive deeper into the projects and now i'll show you that simple animation that was shown at the start of the video so to do that you can see we have different scenes here but we need to delete some of the scenes and only maintain two scenes so let's go back to our model and let's start deleting all of these scenes here let's go to view 1 and let's check view 2 all right so view 2 is fine and i'm just going to orbit over to this side here we can also switch on two point perspective so let's update this as view 2 so update and click on okay so this is view 2 and view 1 all right perfect let's click on save click on no and let's go back to our model here so you will notice in some time that the sketchup model updates if it doesn't update you can also refresh so let's click on reload here all right now let's go to our animation scenes here and now you can see we have only two scenes perfect and now what you can do is we can just go to our settings here we need to make sure our delay time is set to 0 and our transition time can be set to say about 5 seconds and then let's click on the play button so now you can see it creates that smooth animation in sketchup how cool is that so hope you found this video useful and i'll see you guys next video cheers in this video i'll show you how to use sketchup diffusion which is a new generative ai plugin for sketchup and it is now built in with sketchup for web as well so to access sketchup diffusion you can go to your toolbar here on the bottom and click on those three dots and let's select diffusion now diffusion doesn't work for the free users it will only work if you have a sketchup go subscription sketchup pro or sketchup studio So when I orbit you can see we have our model here so the first step is to set up the scene so what I will do is I will place a camera right in front of this model so I'm going to draw some reference lines which I will delete later so I'm just going to draw a line there and I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint and place a line at a distance perfect now I need to place a camera at the end point of this line so to do so you can go to your extra tools here and click on position camera so let's click on position camera and let's place it at this point here so once you place it it will switch to the eye icon which means you need to left click and then bring it back here to your furniture now without tapping the escape key or the select tool you will notice we have the high height here as well So let's give a eye height of say three feet and tap enter. So that will bring the camera down. Maybe let's give two feet. So it's facing. Oh, I guess three feet works well. Yeah, perfect. And now let's go to our scenes here. And let's make sure we are going to use two point perspective. Perfect. And let's create a scene.
So this is the scene that we created, scene 10. Now let's open Diffusion. So the first step you need to do is make sure you refresh the view. So we have this option called Update Snapshot. So let's click on that. So that will update the view with what's there in the SketchUp viewport. And now we need to give our prompt. Now I use a very useful prompt formula, which is available on my website, sketchupguru.com. So you can head to our website and is also part of our AI course for interior design, which, we'll, which we will release soon. So the basic idea is to give a very detailed prompt so that you have a really good result towards the end. So the first step is to define the space. So I will say create a studio render of this TV unit in a living room space. So the first step is to mention the space. Then you can mention the style and aesthetic preference. For example, you can say minimalist interiors. featuring a neutral color palette with clean lines. Then you can also detail out the furniture and layout considerations. For example, you can include additional furniture and more. So you can say include plants around and decor on the side. Then it's a good idea to give some detail on the light. So maybe ample natural light compensated by recessed LED lighting. Let's see what SketchUp Diffusion will offer us. We can also spe specify particular materials that we could probably use. So let's, let's say wooden flooring and natural wood materials. Now, if you'd like to include some unique features, you can do so as well. So maybe vertical garden wall. So we have a handful and let's change the style now to interior photography. That's what we need. We also have some settings here. So if you drag this slider all the way to the right, it will respect the model geometry. So you will see it as is. Now, if you have less of this, it means the AI will generate some new options for your design. And if you have something in between, it will be a mix of what AI would suggest and also a part of your model geometry. Prompt influence works the same. So if you want to have more of the prompts influence on your model, you can increase this to the right. Or if you want less of the prompt influence, then simply drag it to the left. Let's keep this to the middle as well. And finally, we can click on generate. All right, so we've been able to create some cool looking renders, as you can see. Let me just download these. You can also add it as a scene in SketchUp. So let's add it as a scene here. And you can see it gets added to SketchUp. Similarly, this as well. And this as well. So you can see some of them have some options here. So let's go through these options. So this is the first render. Now this respects more of a model geometry, although it did add this extra element here. And it also added some cool lighting here. So you can see we have a drop light. I really like the materials in this. It really gives the natural minimalist look to the scene. Then next is this render where it sort of adds some additional elements like a rug, some lighting there. It's not perfect, but it does give you something to work on and also helps you create more options with your existing model. How cool is that? And finally, like I shared before, you can also share this model.
And if you click on update, the renders show up in SketchUp for web when you're sharing this with your clients as well. How cool is that guys? Now let's see what happens when we increase some of the settings here. So let's go back to SketchUp Diffusion and let's increase Respect Model Geometry and let's decrease the Prompt Influence. So now let's click on Generate. All right, let's add this to our scene. All right, really cool. So now we can see more of the model geometry, although it didn't recognize the glass material, which is all right, because I like this better. So let's add this as a scene as well. You can also, of course, download these images if you like, and further develop it accordingly. So we've added all the scenes. Now let's go back to our incognito website. If it hasn't updated, you can simply refresh for the model to get updated. All right, perfect. So now let's go to scenes and... All right, it's still not updated because I have not saved it here. So we need to click on save first. All right, so it's saved. And now I can go back to my model. And if I refresh, all the scenes should be updated. All right, perfect. So this is not what I wanted. So I'll probably just delete that. But you can see this scene looks really nice. This as well. We can also play the animation and you can see how it transitions from one option to the next which is amazing. So couldn't ask for more from SketchUp for web. It's a really good software to use to get started. I have a small call to action towards the end of this video. So please do check it out. Head to my website, sketchupguru.com. I hope you really like this course. Please do share it as much as you can with your friends and colleagues. And um, yeah, keep supporting SketchUp Guru. The only way to support me right now is through my website, sketchupguru.com where I sell advanced courses. I wanted to share this course for free because I wanted to share more advanced techniques on my website. And if you'd like to dive deeper and learn more about SketchUp, we'll also talk about starting a business with SketchUp, how to work on various kinds of projects and use SketchUp to its maximum potential. I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. Hey guys, welcome to our last video for the course and in this video, I'll show you how to assign shortcuts in SketchUp for web. So to assign shortcuts, we can use the search feature here, which is Shift S or you can click on this icon here. Now my favorite shortcuts that I personally use in all my projects is Hide. So we can search for, for example, Hide. And you can notice when you hover on the right, we have this box here. You need to click on that option and then you can assign a shortcut here. Now, I personally use the function keys to hide. So I tap in F2 to hide objects. Now you can give any other shortcut you like as well. You can also use the modifier keys. For example, if you like to hide, you can probably use Alt and H on your keyboard. And if you're using Mac, you can use any other modifier on Mac as well, for example, for example, option H. But in my case, I like using the function keys. So I'll assign hide to F2. Now we can also assign unhide. So we can use, we'll need to click on that box. So search for unhide and make sure to click on this box on the right. And this will be unhide, which is going to be F4. This will be F3. All right, perfect. And I also like hide rest of the model. So hide rest of the model. This is a very useful shortcut that I use. So I will assign J to the shortcut. And there's also a shortcut called X-ray. This is also another very useful shortcut. So I'll assign Y to this shortcut. Perfect. So now let's use some of these shortcuts in 
our model. So for example, if I enter this group, and if I enter this nested group, and I tap J on my keyboard, you can see I can toggle visibility, which is the same as going to your views here, display here and switching on high risk the model. And if I switch on or tap Y on my keyboard, it switches on the X ray mode. As you can see, which is also pretty useful when you want to model in SketchUp. And of course, we have the hide unhide option. So if I select this object and tap F2, it will hide objects in my model. Now, if you want to unhide, if you tap F4 outside the nested group, it will not unhide the objects. You will always need to enter the group and then tap F4 or F3 to unhide the objects. Now, I will be using these shortcuts in future projects and you'll get access to all those projects in my course. So do check out the course in the link in the description. So I'll see you guys next video. Cheers. All right, guys. So you come to the end of this course on YouTube. Now, if you'd like to explore more and learn more about SketchUp, especially if you're an interior designer or if you're a student, then check out our interior design course with SketchUp. You learn to model, render and also document various interior spaces that includes bedrooms, kitchens, uh, living room spaces and an entire project from scratch. You'll find it in our website. So head to the link in the description. You'll be well on your way to master SketchUp and hopefully bag a lot of projects if you're a professional or ace your studies if you're a student. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe for more such videos. Cheers.